success you carry your weight There ain't no time to debate You gotta push through life All my life Call it how I see it Just because you need it All my life Every day and every night We gotta fight Yeah, we gotta fight it all right, welcome. I've got a guest here that I'm really excited about. Um, I've watched this guy wrestle, and um, he's dynamic to stay, say the least. And uh, he's really, really a, a great guy on and off the mat. And I think we can learn a lot from him. He's accomplished so much um, in his wrestling career, and he's he's actually really still young you know so he's got so much more to go i'm excited to see all that he's going to do uh not only on the mat but off the mat um he's had success in many areas of his life and i'm sitting here with none other than alec pantaleo hey you said it right that time. yeah pantaleo yeah. yeah yeah so i pantaleo <laughs> Pan, say, say it again so i get it right so it's kind of a dynamic. I mean, I say Pantaleo. Pantaleo. It's a little more American. Okay. But like I went to Italy and they're like, Pantaleo. Pantaleo. And I've got a bunch of family on the East Coast. They yep. say um, Pantaleo. Pantaleo. So and then there's actually um, in Michigan, I never met him, but there's another couple Pant- Pantaleos. I guess they go at Pantaleo also. So I'm all over the place. I'm I'm going with Pantaleo. <laughs> That's what I've been saying. That's, what That's I'm good. Go That's good. Well, so I, I'm at least close. I'm in the ballpark. And, and actually, that was my, my, my lead off thing is like, are you Italian? Yeah. Well, so here's the tricky part. Okay. My sister's just got that like, um, oh, the family tree. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Did he do the DNA thing? The the 23 and me? Yes. That's oh, like, yeah, yeah. Whatever it's called. There's a yeah. bunch of them. Yes, absolutely. And there is the same. We're more Lebanese. Um, okay. A little more like Middle Eastern, like, like, like that. And I'm like, listen. I've told everyone in my entire life I'm Italian. <laughs> I cannot retract these statements. Yeah. I'm not a liar. Yeah, no, you know? no. That's the thing. And, and listen, like, so, so Italians, you know, they have a lot of pride in being Italian. Yeah. So you've probably really stood on that for a while. And so going back now and being like, no, actually, that's not an option. Yeah. You d- I mean, put it this way. Like, I know I am Italian at some point because uh-huh. I went to Italy and I'm looking out the window at these dudes unloading our bags off the plane. I'm like, that looks like my uncle. That looks like my uncle. <laughs> they all look like my uncle. They all look like my family. I'm yeah. like, listen, I, this is where I'm from. Yeah, this, this is, is your it. people. Yeah. 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 When I first saw you, I was like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. You know. You know. I. I. I, I thought. Well, it could be a little of this, a little of that, because we're all a little bit of this, a little of that. But the skin complexion, the you know face structure. I was like, he looks like a Roman. You right. know, like he's he's a straight up old you know Roman soldier style. But uh, so, and I actually, do you even know? I'm sure you do. But you you were talking about the pronunciation of your name. What you know what it means. Okay, so I do know there's a city in Sicily. So Sicilian okay. is mainly what I would be. Though. Okay. Um, and it's called San Pantaleo. Okay. And I know that they're they're known for having really good cheese as exporting. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I know is cheese and San Pantaleo. Is I Sicily, like it. So. Well, now listen, I did a little a little research because uh, I wanted to you know want to have a little bit of you know information on you because not necessarily maybe you but the, where the name comes from and, and they did say you know it's got this it's an Italian you know uh, rooted in 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 and they said that it means it's really cool man so okay. you're gonna like oh, this okay lion of all. Oh, let's go. That is dope. That is, might be the best bet you could have given me right there. That's the best <laughs> answer. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say it's, it's called Lion of All, okay. and I, so I, this is segue segues right into what I want to talk to you about, and obviously fighting for success here. We're talking mm-hmm. about our our successes on the mat, on in the ring, outside of those things. Um, so you know, we'll come back to the Lion of All. But how did you? get involved in in the sport of wrestling take me back tell me take me back to where you grew up did you grow up here in michigan like what what's what's your story well i want to tell everybody kind of the roots real quick so yeah so i kind of come from like a different path than a lot of these like top top wrestlers come okay you know like um look at guys like joey mccann and jordan burroughs and all these guys who are like currently some of the best guys in the Mm -hmm. u.s they've always been really really good Mm -hmm. they've won everything right ever right i didn't really get good at wrestling until i mean put it this way I never even wrestled freestyle wrestling until I was going into college. You know, I mean, I, I never went to Fargo. Really? I never went, I went to Super 32 in middle school. I never went to all these different tournaments. You just didn't, you didn't compete. It's not that you didn't, you, didn't, you just didn't show up. No, I mean, like, I'm, a, I'm okay, so that's the thing is I'm a, a two-time state qualifier, two-time state finalist. You know, I just, wow. I, I just didn't have the exposure. Yeah, yeah. I'd beat these guys. I'd go to these Virginia Beach duels and wrestle these top 15 guys. I'd go to wrestle Mason Manville who just won yeah. Fargo, and I beat him. 
right? But I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I just like you just I show never, up. I, I never had the exposure. I never um I wasn't consistent. Put it that okay, way. Okay. Okay. So, so so what was it? Was it so Jordan tells me a story that you know his his uh you know mom. Uh, or his mom and dad, you know, put him in it, and, and they, you know, saw saw he was a WWF fan. Right. You know, uh, jo- uh, Johnny Dadilly just says that he found a flyer, and his mom, and he had all this like energy, and they're like, "We got to put you in something." How, what's yours? How how did it come around? Okay, yeah, so we'll take it back. Um, me getting involved in wrestling is not like um, random. Like, okay, I come from a family wrestling. I thought so. Yeah, and the, it's a big family. Wrestling. Okay, so my. They're good, <laughs> right? Okay. So okay. Um, my dad was a couple time All American at oh, wow. Olivet College. My uncle Dan was a national champion at Olivet College. Wow. My uncle Joe was a junior world champ, um, and two time national finals for U of M. Wow. My cousin Joe was a couple time state champion for Virginia. Ended up wrestling at college, um, becoming a national qualifier. And then we have all my other uncles who also wrestled, weren't as successful, but like a lot of my family wrestled. So by me wrestling, it wasn't like a matter of if. Like, I had a choice. It was just yeah. when I was going to do it and if I was going to be good at it. What age? I started when I was six. Okay. Um, same as, yes, yeah, same as. Terrible old. until <laughs> until middle school. I started getting a little more. I'm a pretty, like, naturally built yeah, guy. Yeah. So I could get away with just kind of being a bull, like a bulldog. Okay. And then um, in high school. I mean, see, my freshman year of high school, I was a big prospect for Michigan. Okay. I didn't even qualify for the state tournament. Sophomore year, I win the state t- championship. <laughs> you wow. Know? Junior year, I break my hand. Senior year, I get pinned in the state final. So it's oh like, my again, it's, it's up and down with me. You know? So yeah, you, you, you said you're terrible in the beginning. You're, I won't say the word push, but you were really uh, instigated to get into the sport of wrestling. It wasn't much right. of an option. You like, your family did it. Your parents, your dad obviously knew what it did for him as a person. So he's probably wanting his son to do the same thing. When you're young and you're not having success like that, and you come from this family of, you know, just killers. What does that? What does that do? What do you? What are you feeling during that time? I mean, right. I mean, you got cousins that are kicking butt, and you're like, right. What, 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 you know, what, what was going through your head at that point? I mean, I know it's been a minute, but you know, it's 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 important because there's kids that are, you know, eight, nineteen years old that are, they're getting licked, you know. So yeah, yeah. I I dated back to um, you know, I worked with my uncle Joe. I mean, I, I, you can even take a step back further. Like my dad was my coach growing up. Okay, my dad was the high school wrestling coach. Oh, okay, so uh, yeah. there was a tricky dynamic there between i knew my dad knew what he was talking about but he's my dad mm. and i'd call him dad at practice he's like i'm coach <laughs> you know so um there was that and again my high school team was terrible too like oh. me, me and my training partner were the only two state champs and okay so you did come from like this high like oh, no okay and in michigan too you can't there's a rule with mhsaa you can't leave um, the state of Michigan to go to these tournaments like Iron Man and stuff. Yeah, I, I couldn't even go if I wanted to. Oh, really? So I'm stuck wrestling these puds this entire time. That's why I'm getting no exposure. Yeah. But anyways, it goes back to I was like when I went when I won my state title my sophomore year. I thought I was the big dog. Right? Yeah. Oh, sure. And Jordan Burroughs talks about this. It's important to win a state, it state is. title. Yeah. Um, but then I go talk to my uncle Joe and again I knew my uncle Joe was good. I didn't know how go- I didn't know how good junior world champs mm-hmm. were. Mm-hmm. And he's showing me technique, and he's like, he's doing this old school stuff where it's like <laughs> tying my hands together, oh, and like, yeah. like you know, yeah. like making me actually wrestle properly. Yeah, not like this, like mm-hmm, this. Mm-hmm. And um, I just I didn't want to listen to a word he was saying. Yeah, you know, I was like, I know more than him a state champ. Da, 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 da. Oh, so this is after you're already a state champ. He's, he's yeah. doing this. Okay. And then I get to college, I get humbled real quick. Okay, and I call up Uncle Joe. I'm like, hey. <laughs> What was that stuff you were showing me? Again? Yes, <laughs> you know? absolutely. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like how I grew up. I mean, it was just trial and error. And so, yes, yeah, so you're in it. You're you you're not great, but then you kind of you kind of grow into your body a little bit. You're, you get a little stocky, a little muscle, and so you're kind of like a muscle wrestler. Right. You know, middle school, high school, f- kind of you know push pressure your way into a state championship and a state finals. You said you got injured your junior year? Yeah. So you were out your junior year completely? Yeah, so this is and this is even a funny story. My my whole like life look back I try and make it like a funny story as much <laughs> as it good. can the bad things as much like funny as it can be. Like even I look at this past two weekends I I, I lost to Zane Rutherford. I'm like it's always this Zane Rutherford is <laughs> the guy who's always in front I have to him or Jason off and they're both doing really well. Yeah. Um anyways, um going back so yeah. I, the guy I lost to to get to the state tournament my freshman year mm-hmm. was Malik Amit. Oh. Okay. Um, he beat me in the blood round at the regional. Okay. I beat him in the state finals the next year. Wow. Right. I didn't qualify, then I beat him in the state finals. 
junior year he wins the state tournament because I broke my hand midseason. I was undefeated and I broke my hand. I was okay. Out. Senior year I wrestle him. I'm undefeated again. I didn't give up a takedown the entire year. Wow. I think I attacked her pin ever. I was like killing it. And I went out there and I got pinned in 30 seconds. Uh-uh. Fastest in Michigan history. I shot a single, uh, boom, turn, cradle, pin me. Oh, and my not, And then we went on to be teammates next year at U of M. All yes. three, we had a fight for a spot the entire time at U of M. And so then, you guys just stayed the same weight through your college as well? I got a little bit bigger. He went 49. Okay, that's right, yeah. Um, and then we went. We, we became partners um, in, uh, at Cliff Keen Wrestling Club. Wow. He ended up being my main training partner. So we went from being like that like almost like arch nemesis yeah. to being like one of the most important figures of my wrestling career, not only in my current training because he's my main training partner, right. but because of what he shaped me into how I am. Like That's incredible. You know, I, I think that him, me beating him in the state finals was a huge learning experience and like kind of humbling for him. Sure. And then, um, you know, him beating me to even get to the state tournament it's probably the reason why I trained so hard to be and became a state champ the next year. That makes a lot of it's, sense. That's a, that's a it's give that, and take in wrestling, you know? And, and that honestly, so that's kind of like what we're going for in this, in this whole podcast is like that, what you just described there, the fact that you, you get humbled up, right? Mm-hmm. You take your licks, whatever it be. Maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, a job that, that's just not going so well and you go in and you're giving it all you got, but you just, start, it's just not working out, yeah. and, but it motivates you and it, it turns you into something that you couldn't have been without that experience. Right. And that is life, right? Right. You know, I, I've, I've experienced the same things as a, as a husband. I've experienced the same things as a, as a dad. You know, and I always, it seems like wrestling is kind of that backbone to a yeah. lot of the things that I do. And, and it sounds to me like that's one of those experiences that's just going to, it's probably forever changed you. Yeah. And will probably forever will. I mean, call it hubris, but I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer if still, I mean, not even like a young man here, so I feel like I'm getting a little bit older, right? <laughs> it's the point where the world's starting to get a little more real. Yeah. And I still believe that if someone really wants to do something and they really dedicate themselves to, to it, mm-hmm. like you can do it. Uh, yeah. Like it's, I think it's 100% possible. I agree. I agree. In, in, in that, that, again, I think that's reinforced in the wrestling room on the mat you yeah. know the guys you said you and your training partner were the only guys and typically that's the case right you go to watch the state finals typically if you see a team they have pairs yeah and it's the tra- it's their training partners say good things come in pairs that's that's, actually- that's very true and so again with that being said it's like if you go in a room you can see the kid that's gonna have success yeah you go to the off season. You one kid shows up. You know what that kid's got. It's, it's if he puts in the time and the work, anything's possible. Right. Right. And so, so we we got you into into your through your high school. You're getting recruited by University of Michigan. You know, maybe. Well, you say, okay. Tell me that. Tell me yeah. that. So, so what's going on there? And this is what I tell a lot of these kids. I go run these wrestling camps around here locally. And um, the thing is, I actually I I enjoy running wrestling camps. Okay. It's funny. My coaches want don't want me running camps. So like, you got to spend more time training, not trying to teach it. Because they say teaching training is a huge dynamic change, right? Yeah. But I'm like, I enjoy it because I think back to when I was in these kids' positions. Mm-hmm. Like some of these kids are just god awful. Right. But they made end up being the next Alec Pantelio, you know, hopefully better than me. That's, that's right. what we're looking for here. Um, but I just think back and I'm like, it, if I can inspire one of these kids just a little bit to reach a next level of wrestling, I mean, to be even become a college wrestler is statistically like you have like a 1% chance. Oh me. yeah. It's so small. And now I do this professionally in my job. I travel the world. I've, I mean, I've done everything I've, I've hoped for Yeah, and there's more for me to do. Yeah. So, it's pretty awesome if you, if you if you can find your way into this position. Yeah, that's an incredible thing. Like you said, it's just, it is rare. I right. mean, like what you do is it's 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 like literally less than one percent that's able to do it. Right. But it's not always been the most obvious path. I mean, you've had to right. work to get there. That's so. Returning back to that um idea of recruiting at Michigan. Yes. Okay, I got pinned in thirty seconds. I never yes. went to Fargo. I didn't do all this kind of stuff, right? My grades are like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty smart guy, but okay. they weren't like U of M standards, right? Right, right. you know. And they had a kid named Ben Whitford commit there already, who was like the dude. Okay, like he was, I mean, Michigan kid, Michigan, got, Illinois kid, and went to Michigan. And okay, ben, he was like he won everything. Okay, he's one of those guys. Yeah, and um, a few other recruits, including Malik. Yeah, and I'm like down the totem pole, but uh, I guess a few things kind of hiccuped along the way. And uh, my uncle Joe made a call to Coach McFarlane. He said, "Hey, listen, my nephew's not the most technical guy. I know he doesn't have the best, you know, accolades as far as some of these guys. But he's, he's very coachable. He's hungry. You wow. know, just take a chance on him." And I was a walk on, 
And Man. I ended up starting as a true freshman in that year. Wow. Yep. So you go from not necessarily being recruited. You're on the radar, off the radar, on the, but you weren't exposed like the rest of the, the, the group was to walking on yep. to being a freshman, true freshman yeah. starter. I couldn't even practice with the, the college guys during the summer because there's rules about you had to be like a state champ to even practice really? with like the USA wrestling card, like RTC rules. So I, mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't, I wasn't even good enough technically to go there. So you walk in this room. So now we're transitioning straight into college, right? Yeah. So and let's eat that microphone. So I make sure I get the best. Cause this yep. is good stuff. I want to make sure everybody hears everything. So you walk into this room hammers. Hmm. Okay. You go, you, you said yourself, your high school room was, was, it was second tier at best. Right. You walk in this room. What's going through your head? What's, what's, what's up? Yeah, so I walk in, and um, at that that time, their main starter just took third in the nation. He graduated, so the, I knew there was an opening at okay. that spot. Um, but I'm like, I'm just lucky to be here, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. And um, so we, I ended up going to the freshman sophomore division at the MSU Open. Okay. And um, I won it. I beat everyone there. And our wow. co- and the coaches were like, "Hey, listen, we want to we want to take you to this duel here. See how you do." And my first college match was against Dave Habit, who ended up making the national finals that right. year. Right. And I, he, he pins me. He, I get knocked out. And then my second match was getting Taiwan Claxton. And now fights in the UFC. Oh, he wow. was also like a couple time All-American, I believe. Yeah. Like two hammers right off the get, right off the bait. Um, and I lost both those matches. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then coach is telling me, hey, we're going to start you. And I'm just like, you not just see my performance this past weekend. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I'm not clearly. I'm not good enough. Like I'm wow. like in my mind. I'm like, I mean, this is this is deep waters here. Yes, and um, that's all I could think about. I'm talking to some of the guys on the team. You know, I was on past team Michigan's with, and I'm like, listen, like, am I good enough to be in this? And they're like, we think you're good enough. I mean, if coaches think you're good enough, you're good enough. And wow. then eventually, I'm just like, listen. I don't have a choice at this matter. My measures pulled. You know, like I'm I'm starting. You know, or. I wasn't. I knew I wasn't ready. Yeah, I'm starting, so I kind of just dived in, and then I wrestled my first duel, and I beat a pretty good kid. I forget who it was. I'm like, maybe I am good enough for this. Wow, that was a that was a switch because I had a lot of, I mean, not even insecurities, just like I was very unsure. Yeah, you know, I believe in myself 100, percent but I'm just like, maybe I should just redshirt and come back stronger. Like, right, I was natural. only one. That's I was natural. Only one in my class. I was starting. You're the only true freshman uh, of like that, the ten recruits. That's we had. starting. Yes, I was the only wow. one. And you and, and literally. Weeks prior, not even on the team. I couldn't even practice with them weeks prior. Yeah. My, my freshman, I mean, the first year there, like, we had that preseason conditioning, and I'm like, I understood how fast runners actually are and yeah. how fast, like, some of these guys, like, that aren't runners, but, like, they're just extremely tough wrestlers, how mm-hmm. fast they can be. And then there's, like, me with my short legs trying to keep <laughs> up. Like, I mean, it was just everything about that was deep waters, and I've never done anything like that in my entire life. So, you know? so any, no, be prior to this, no, like, intensive camps where you're wrestling the hardest guys in the nation. Nothing like that. Never went to Jordan camp, never went to J Rob. So um, you're coming in, you're coming in here. I mean, and I'm just trying to paint the picture here because I mean, I'm kind of blown away because yeah. you're coming in just literally fresh, not knowing any of this stuff thrown in to the shark infested waters, true freshman. Yep. And now you're starting like before that, before you, you got to that point, <laughs> was there a moment there where you're like, yo, I'm not, I'm not good enough. Like I've, I mean, I'm in too deep. Yeah. Well, that's another thing too is, um, I mean, I was by that time my freshman or my freshman year of college, right. I was pretty physically developed. Okay. Like, I spent a lot of that summer too, like getting in shape because I'm like, I'm going to college wrestling, got to get yeah. in shape. I didn't realize I was doing way more than everyone else was doing. I, I just thought it was like, like the standard. I was actually like in very very good shape. It just these guys were better wrestlers. Okay. So when I got there, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting beat by a lot of these guys. But then occasionally I'd sneak some good hard take downs in them and they couldn't stop it at all. And I thought to myself, like when I decided to really commit, I'm like, you know what? I really dive in and learn this technique, not just act like like randomly like I have in college, in high school. I could just hit a move and it would work. Right. I had to develop some chain wrestling, some technique. If I can really do that, I think maybe I could be really good at this. And throughout the season, I'd get those extra reps and I'd come in the morning, you know, do those actually we call them like breakfast club workouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, eventually I started getting a few like main takedowns that were off of sequences. I started getting a few like like getting ridden out on bottom. Was yep. like, no one ever touched me on bottom because I never got taken down. In right. 
And I, these dudes are throwing a saddle on me in college. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I, I had to like, spend a lot of time learning like my, how I'm going to get off and bottom yeah. because I'm getting exposed here. Right. So, so that, that brings up a great point is like, so you go in, you had a, I would say a successful high school and nobody, uh, people weren't taking you down. You were taking everybody down. Like you said, you didn't get points scored on you yeah. until the state finals, right? In right. your senior year. So you've got this, this where you're just dominating. You go into a room where now you're getting ridden, like to a point where it's break, you know, you're breaking, you know? I think that sometimes that's kind of the Achilles heel of a really good high school wrestler. Because they're not put in positions where they're having to, you know, a lot of times if they're on bottom, they're out within <laughs> seconds and they're not. And a lot of times they can't ride yep. because they're cutting people. Mm -hmm. So, so you kind of had a little bit of that coming in. You had to kind of change. Did you have to go through a big transition to changing your wrestling up? Yeah. So my uncle Joe told me, he's like, listen, you, you're not at this point in your career, you're not going to become super good at all three positions, which is neutral, top and bottom. He's okay. Like, Take two of them and become really good at those. Mm -hmm. and the third one is like your fail safe if you need it. Like be good at it, but don't be you don't have to be like like super great. Right. right? So I became really good at my feet and I became to get off from anyone. Right. And the matches yeah. I did lose in, in college, guys like Zane Rutherford mm -hmm. and Jason mm -hmm. Nolf, these close matches on our feet, very close. Right. But when they got on top, right. I mean that they still exposed me because they were they were really good. Real good. Positions. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Um so yeah, that that's what it was. I mean, again, my support ne network growing up from my uncles, yeah, you had to my parents to my fr friends and family around you. Like, I'm actually from just outside Ann Arbor. I grew up. Okay, so this is 20, home. Mi 20 minutes from here. Nice. I never thought I was going to come here again. Academically, I didn't think I was going to fit in. I mean, this this school's very very yeah. difficult to get into. Oh, yeah. When I got here, I, I actually the same idea. When I got here my freshman year, um. Like, I, I mean, some dumb decisions on my end, like, <laughs> like, oh, let's take Chinese. That's not like a good, good class to <laughs> yeah, take. And yeah. then started as a true freshman. And I basically got put in a position academically where I was in like deep waters and I had to really like kind of wow. decide on like, I'm like, am I going to flunk out of this school or am I yeah. going to make some changes and make it happen? And, um, I, I mean, that's, that's anything in life. I think if you expose yourself to enough, um, enough reason. Yeah. To succeed, you can do it. And my, my, my senior year here, I mean, I had a I had a four point I got all eight. It's like wow. I thrived once I decided to really get my you know, my ducks in order. Yep. And move forward. But, so, but so it was it was not it wasn't it, you couldn't. It's just that you had to you had to decide that's what you're gonna do. Yeah. I didn't know how. And he, okay. the, th the thing is too is you go back to high school wrestlers. Yep. Again, in my class, um we I think we had ten guys. Only three of them finished all the way throughout. Wow. Malcolmine, me and another kid named um, Garrett Sutton, who was really, really tough. Mm -hmm. He just, he actually um, took Miles Amin to three matches in the wrestle off the year. So he, Miles Amin's like yeah, an Olympian, yeah, right? Like Olympic medalist. Stud. He just couldn't get by Miles Amin. You wow. Know? You just had that guy in your weight class. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. So, so it sounds to me, and, and I want, want to get your answer in this, but it sounds to me like, you you had an incredible work ethic that allowed you to kind of persevere through some of the the, the shortcomings, and it sounds to me like you you just got after it. You grind it until you made it. You know, yeah. it, it, what is wrestling? Even from you know little kid high school in college, what what is wrestling taught you? Like, hey, I know there's a lot there, but is there anything you can pull out of it that like this is this is like foundational stuff for me in my life, and this is how I was able to be successful on the mat in the classroom, and now you know doing other things. Yeah, what were the basics of wrestling that taught it taught you? Two two big things, and they carry over. Especially, I spent a month over in Russia, and this really got like emphasized there. But discipline and respect. Okay. Those are the big things. I think respect is something that's unique to wrestling mm. that a lot of other sports don't have. Even like UFC, I don't. I think a lot of these UFC guys like they don't respect right. some of their opponents, and I mm -hmm. get it because you're about to bash a guy's face. In. Yeah. Um. And even then, in wrestling, like I can respect someone and not like them. Yeah, of course. You know, of course, I can act cordial around yeah. around them, but like. You got you got to respect them. I mean, yep. you got to be like some of these dudes. They're they're bad, and they know if they can beat you, that's 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 Spartan death. Yes, dude, I've dedicated my life to this. If someone can beat me at my craft, like what a beautiful way to go because yeah, that's a worthy opponent, right? right. Um, but then um, discipline. Okay, uh, again, thirty percent of my incoming freshman class graduated. That's in right? that's insane. So, and here's the thing about it is, 
I'm over here as a true freshman wrestling 149. I'm cutting like crazy to get down, you know, and we are, it was just very uncomfortable. Yeah. And they're, no, they're all red shirting, right? All these, these top guys are red shirting. They're having a great time mm-hmm. partying. Yep. They're throwing parties at our, like oh at our dorm, gosh. you know, and I'm like, dang, that looks fun. I'm walking with my like tea kettle, you know, like trying to detox. <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, man, am, am I really missing out? Like, like, you know, that's, it kind of, it sucked. I'll be yeah, honest with you. At I that time, it. you know, it sucked. But then I look back and I saw these guys a few years ago, um, a few years ago, a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and they kind of told me, that, like, dude, we're so proud of you. Like, we wish we would have stuck to it too. And I'm like, yeah. I guess I had that delayed gratification, that discipline, mm-hmm. it, it paid off because they're coming to me now. And I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that I'd go back and do what they're doing. Yeah. At the time, it seemed like right, but for right sure. Now, no. So, so yeah, I, I like that. So, definitely, I, the discipline thing, and, and, you know, I read a bunch of stuff about discipline, stuff like that, but it seems like with discipline, it opens up the opportunity for pretty much, like you said, if you, you know, you can do anything. But he, I think one of the key ingredients to being able to do anything is discipline. Yeah. You know, if, if, you can't just say you're going to do something, right? You know, there's a lot of guys, man. I, I, I coach wrestling and I, you know, been wrestling my whole life. You, I started all my kids off. What's your goals? And they'll give me, oh, I'll be state champion. And then, you know, their discipline does not match their right. goal. And so I, I can definitely see that being right. something that, you know, is huge. Uh, how did that discipline carry over into, you know, uh, it, it sounds like it carried over into your schoolwork. Yep. So what about what about that? Was it just like you were the same same student as you were a wrestler? Is that was that was that what happened? I mean, yeah. So I started becoming not even like philosophical, but I started becoming like focusing on what I can control, what I can't control, what can I influence, um, what can influence me. Those those kind of things, right? And I kind of realized in, in college that um, I do do well in group work. Yeah, but I have to like kind of pick my groups because okay. I don't want I don't want the groups <laughs> randomly beside me. I think that. Um, having a good, healthy relationship with your partner sure. is important. Um, so that's kind of tricky. But then another one too was I, I kind of wanted to spearhead as many of these projects and all okay. my, if I can control my, what I was doing as far as my work, like I knew it was going to be done well because I do things right the first time. Okay. I, don't, I don't rely on others. I don't yeah. say, hey, assign this, you know, you get it done. I'm like, I'll just take care of it. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's a wrestler's mentality, though. Put it on, put it on my in my hands. It might, it might hurt me down the road because Mm. I might become what stubborn to a point, you know. Um, but I knew that, like, again, my I got a four point on my senior year here, and I was in all group projects, and I'm like, listen, you you can put your name on the paper, it'll get done. You get an A, (laughs) but just let me work. You know, that's yeah, that's. I think that is a, a kind of a wrestler's, you know, especially the you know the ones that have the discipline and have found success. It can be it can be a, a incredible positive and it can be a negative like you said to a certain degree but there is this I want it in my hands they don't point their finger and be like hey well I didn't su- succeed because of you right right that sounds I mean if that happened to me if I was in a situation where I failed because someone else that I assigned a job to that's it goes back to my it's my mm, fault that's good that's you know, good I take ownership of all that stuff yeah this, now again so just we'll go right into that what makes a good leader? What makes if you've been around some good leaders, right? Tell me, I mean, some good coaches, some good teammates. It sounds like your family, you know, uncles. What have you found? What what principles and philosophies have you found in the leadership around you that you've been able to kind of give the reins to? Because to be coachable, you've yeah. got to trust these people, right? Off the top of your head, if you know anything, what 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 makes what to you what makes a good leader? So there's. I mean, there's different kinds of leaders. There's okay. people who lead by example. There's people who lead by, you know, enhancing you as a person. Mm-hmm. There's people who lead by enhancing the group entire, mm-hmm. then the group enhances you. You know, um, I look at guys like Sean Burmett. Okay. Sean Burmett's a fantastic head coach, so specifically. I mean, he's a great personal coach. Right. But he's a great head coach because he, he looks at the team as a whole unit and how can I grow the unit. Yeah. Right? And that's why we all, that's why we're having a lot more success because yeah. I think, I mean, I, I just look at, the team now mm-hmm. at Michigan Wrestling, mm-hmm. Team 101, I think it is, versus my freshman year. And the kids there, um, my freshman year, they were just, they want to be all Americans. Right. Great, noble goal. No problem. Yes. The, the guys here want to be national champions. They want to mm. be multiple time national champions. They want to be team national champions. Wow. And that changes the dynamic of. Of, of like the whole room mm-hmm. and that's responsible because the leader who he's picking to be joining the team, he's not just making the best guys. He's getting the guys who 
like me, you know, these guys from middle of nowhere. Yes. But yep. they're coachable and they want to succeed with other people. That's huge. And that's a great leader in my eyes. In my eyes. So so you're saying it, it, it is that he's able to see past cuz Jordan and I had the same exact conversation. Sometimes teams get in a position where they want to be good now. Yeah. And they pick the best guys, but sometimes those best guys can be, you know, a cancer to the room. Mhm. You're you're saying that a good leader needs to be able to see past the the facade. Right. They need to be able to see the character of the person and be able to pull Huge. that out. So yeah, and I've seen a massive turnaround. Not, not I mean that Michigan's always been good, but there's mm-hmm. been there's been, and you maybe can speak to this more, but there's been buy-in recently that I've not necessarily seen in the past. Has it been because there's been national champions? Has it been because there's been all these Big Ten champions? What has been the catalyst to that buy-in? You're saying at Michigan? At Michigan. Just, okay. Um, well, again, the coaches are very good at vetting who, who they're bringing in now. now. Um, you know, and a, a big thing, too, is our administration is they're all aboard the wrestling train. They're like, listen, like we're giving you guys whatever you need to do That's to make good. the right choices, which That's is big. great. Right? Yeah. It helps. Um but look at Michigan wrestling. How many call it legacy families? Yeah. Right. I mean, we've got currently right now. I mean, a couple. I mean, yeah. I'm a legacy technically because yep. my my yep. uncle wrestled there. The means. Yeah. They're all legacy. Huge. So you know you when, when you're getting one, you know like how they're raised because yeah. you've already seen it before and mm-hmm. like you know, so like that's a good fail safe, right? Yep. And I think that um we're gonna keep seeing more of these legacy like wrestling. Legacy athletes in general. It's right. a big thing in Michigan. Michigan's got a long heritage of yeah. great athletes, presidents, astronauts, a bunch of these people. That's incredible. I think we're going to keep seeing these these people come in because, uh, and that's, I mean, that's success repeating itself. Yeah, that's true. That's real true. And, and it is interesting thing because you don't see that. I mean, I've seen other schools get, a, you know, the brothers or, or whatever be the case, but Michigan is unique in the sense that there's like generations. Yeah. That's kind of that's really cool. I, I I do like that a lot. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're breaking it down, and what type of coach uh, is best? What, what what how do you like to be coached? Right. Um, it's torn because again, I'm still learning. I got sure. Oh yeah. This is the funny thing about it is I'm 25 right now. Yep. Right, and I've wrestled for pretty much my entire life, mm-hmm. starting when I was six. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and I still feel like I have so much to learn. Again, I spend a month in Russia, and all these these cats are sneaky. Like they're, they're, <laughs> they they are very crafty, and I'm like, I have a lot to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get around these like great great coaches, and I, I'm just like a sponge, just soaking as much as I can. So I look at a guy like Sergey Belagazov. He's my main coach, right okay. Now. And I'm like, he, he's got to be the best coach because he knows the most amount of. Like wrestling, he's backed it up with his his accolades. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's won everything mm-hmm. forever. Like you know, yeah. like how can you argue that he, there's a better coach? But then you look at like a personal coach. You look at guys he, like, you know, Burrs will talk about this with Mark Manning. Like Burrs way more way more accolades than Mark Manning. But Manning was able to fine tune everything to make Burrow be com- Burrs be comfortable going right. into matches. Right, like he, t- he speaks very highly of Manning. Yeah. Um. So there's a trick dynamic. I don't have the exact answer for you. Mm-hmm. I, I do know this. I know that Josh Trella. My freshman year, um, for whatever reason, he took me under his wing. Okay. And since then, we've been like this. Like, we're like family at this point. Like, Josh is my right-hand guy. Like, I've traveled the world, and Josh has gone with me. He's my, yeah. my training partner, my personal coach. I mean, I've come to Josh about, like, things way outside wrestling. Right. You know, he's, yeah. he's like family to me. Yeah, absolutely. So, that is um, a good leader, a good coach, you know. Yeah. Sergey is, again, if I need if I have a wrestling question, I will call him up at any any time of the hour, mm-hmm. he'll pick up and be like, die, like, what's up? <laughs> you know, and like, he'll have the answer. He just knows. He knows. Like, yeah. I feel like he has every answer. Every right. Need. How about, how about that tough coach? Yeah. Do you um, need that? It's okay. So that, that's another thing. My uncle. You, know, you got the uncle. Okay. So yeah. And that's kind of my dad. My dad's like, you need to do this. You yeah. Do that. Right. right. And that, that's the funny thing about that is that tough coach. Mm-hmm. Because when, that tough coach has to be better than you. Yeah. Like when, when people are trying true. to tell you to do something. Yeah, they'd better be but good. But they don't have the to back it up. <laughs> and you're just like, what? Good point. You good know. Point. Um, put it this way. If a, if a brand's brother was telling me I need to do something mm-hmm. that's like tough, it, it behooved me to listen to him. Sure. Because maybe he might be right. Right. You know. Right. Um, so it, it's 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 based on each different athlete. Right. You know? For I, sure. For sure. I kind of, from what I hear from you, you need the coach that has wisdom, yeah. that knows, right? You need someone in your life. And again, going back to this full circle to life, 
people that are going to make you better. You need someone that knows more than you. Yeah, mentor. You need a mentor. You need somebody that knows better more than you. The other thing that I, the the other one that you brought out with your your training partner and your coach is you need someone that's close enough to you to be honest. Yeah, I think that I think that that's a big deal. Huge. I think a lot of times our friends, quote unquote are the practice partners that'll take time off with you. Mm-hmm. That's what I kind of equate that to in life. Yeah, the coach isn't looking, we're going to take, take a little time off. But your real friend is the guy that'll be honest with you and say, right. hey, you're a, little, you, 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 you're a little soft here. You need to get better here, right? right? And we hear it differently because they're that close to us. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then, like you said, kind of rounding it off, you kind of need that guy that's better than you, done a little more than you, maybe a little more tough than you, right? right. That can kind of push you that way. I think that that's exactly life too. I think it's all about execution too, though. True. Like, so I actually, my uncle Joe, I think back to um, Ohio TOC. Back in, I was, uh, I just won a state title, so I was a sophomore. Okay. And I lost to, I lost in the blood round. Mm-hmm. Right? Again, like I, I didn't get the big exposure. Yeah. And um, my uncle Joe, like he, he came at me like, I mean, he trained at Iowa. So he's he's been around all these yeah. guys. And he came at me. He's like, you didn't do this. And mm-hmm. like, he's like, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, I don't want to listen to a word you get. Like, I, like, yeah. I, I snap back at him. Like, yeah. Very disrespectful and my, looking back for me. Right. But you're young. Right. Yeah. Um, And I guess probably the execution could have been, I mean, he probably maybe would have been like waited on a couple hours. And I sure. Listen. Or maybe even a couple of days. Yeah. You know? I look back to this. I, I'm very unhappy with my world team trials performance. Mm, okay. From a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, it was just one of those days I would think about it. It was one of those days, like, for some reason, I wasn't firing. Mm. Like, I, I don't know why. Everything leading up to was great. I just, I won the U.S. Open yeah. this year. <laughs> so I was, I was one, there. Number one seed at the World yeah. Team Trials. And um, I just, it was just one of those days that happened, yeah. you know. And coaches didn't say a word to me. They let me process my own thoughts. And they said, hey, listen, when you want to dissect what happened, let, let's, let's do it. We can come yeah. over. We, I have a sauna. We can talk. We can sit down and relax. And, like you can do a little more like it doesn't have to be harsh like, yeah we can we can plot through this right um for me that makes sense it allows me to process what i need to do first and right. then maybe i can i can i can then i can hear them out then i can make my final consensus true. Thought, thought true yeah so, I, I think that makes a lot of sense and plus wrestlers i know the pride word's a, a bad word for a lot of people with pride 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 you know whatever but wrestlers are a prideful group you know, you and so be. when we, yeah, you got to have a little bit of that and you'll chip on your shoulder. So when you get, as a man, someone comes at you hard, a lot of times, and I shouldn't say, man, these, these women, they're incredible. The, mm. People come at you yeah. hard. A lot of times the response is to kind of push back. Mm. I think, and from what I'm gathering from you, when there was a, a, a respect there and you know that they have their best, your best interest in mind and they come at you tactfully, and, but it's, it, it is force it, a kind of a, 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 yeah. a, 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 a aggressive. You see that differently than just someone attacking you. Yeah. When someone attacks us, we're trained to be on offense. It's a nat- yeah. It's a natural it's a, response. Right. Right. So, so yeah. So all you high school coaches out there that, you know, lose their cool, <laughs> listen to Alec here is saying, listen, give it some time. Right. Let it marinate a little bit. These, these kids and these young men and women know they're dis- they're disappointed more than anyone. For sure. So give them a, give them some time, and then we'll hear it, we'll hear it differently. Yeah. That's- Call it tough love. I mean, I, that's one thing. The older I get, and I think anyone who is you know getting older as this time goes is realizing that there is be a lot, a lot of people sugarcoat things. Yeah. Who like you know like the jaded eyes type thing. Yeah, and, I think that's too far the other way. Right. And yeah. And I, I mean, in my life, like I've I've done a very good job of of cutting out the people who I know sugarcoat things mm-hmm. to look good in front of me. Like mm-hmm. I want I want people to be upfront, honest. With yeah, me. absolutely. Call it tough love, but at least I know that like there's not BS. I have to work through. I've got right. enough enough to worry about. Yep. I don't want my relationships to be uh, more BS. Same. You know. Same. Yeah. And and kind of the order you get, you know, quite a bit older than you, but your radar for that gets even more magnified i look forward to that yeah, yeah. and it's like you, it, you, it seems like there's a dwindling of friends and stuff like that and it's not necessarily it's not a negative thing it's not you're not mad it's just that, again you don't need that i think when you're yeah. young and you're insecure you need that like uh reinforcement someone laughing at your jokes that aren't funny you right. know someone telling you you're great and you're not great you're not you know right. you kind of want that but as you get older you want people to be honest and direct right it's beautiful it I mean, is that, that, it just makes a streamlined life absolutely like, you know, like, yeah 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 it's so good my wife asks all the time like well, what what do you look for in a friend i say some someone that it's it's uh i'm on the same page with and it's easy i'm direct they're direct yeah. we just 
we just flow. Right. If I have to put on, like, you know, like I had to, I gotta get myself ready for this, you know, friendship, like I'm gonna go over to such and such house and I gotta get myself in a mindset, right. that's probably not not for me. It, you know what? That's another thing too, when I look back at um a Michigan wrestling. Okay. Right. You know, I okay, so this is funny. My I actually was recruited hardcore by Eastern Michigan. Okay. And the coach at Eastern is Dave Bullard and Derek Del, Del Porto. Dave Bullard now coaches at Michigan, but mm. we'll get to that. <laughs> um, because Dave, Dave Bullard was like my kind of like, like like club coach growing up. Okay. I go to his advantage, advantage wrestling. I'd thrash yeah. everyone. So he knew I was really good. Right. But he, no, all the other college coaches didn't didn't know. So he knew he was coming. Yeah. yeah. And I, to be honest, like he, he threw me a scholarship, everything to go to Eastern Michigan. I just told him like, Dave, like, listen, I feel like I'm, like I know I'm not good, like that great, but I feel like I'm better than like what Eastern has to offer right, right now. I was very upfront. And he, right, like, he respected it. You yeah, know? sure. Um, but what was again with this? Um, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah, like that yeah. This. Um, but what I was saying. Okay, so the all the different college coaches come in here and they're sitting on the couch. You know, some mm -hmm. some most of them are sitting up tight like this. You know, right. they're, they're pending, pending, um, you know, board and. They're like trying to like sell their college to me. Okay. Right. And then the Michigan guys come over to my house. They kick back like this. <laughs> yeah. They're like, man, we love to have you here. You know, yeah. and I'm just like, you know what? Like these kind of guys, like you seem like guys who don't like put up with BS. Like yes. they're like, hey, listen, you want to be here? Great. You want to leave? Great. You mm -hmm. know, they're not, they're not going to like, they knew I wasn't like the most important thing. They knew that we're all in a collective goal. Right. And I feel like some of the other college coaches, I won't point names, but like they were like, like almost kind of like betting, like they like needing me to come here for some reason, right? Like, you know, yeah. Um, and I'm like, I want to go with those guys. I think those guys actually might be on some stuff, and that's why even Sean nowadays, we we make a joke. He's he's always wearing long sleeves, and he's got so many tricks up those sleeves. That's why, <laughs> like, as long as I've I've known all these coaches in Michigan, yeah, they've always been like doing their own thing, like behind closed doors. But it's just keep going, snowballing, snowballing. Yeah. We've got Kevin Jackson in the room now. Right? Incredible. I mean, what what's next? Like, yeah. we, how many Olympic Olympic medals do we have in the room right now? It's, it's, it's good. Oh, Jaden Cox just came by the way. So I that's another know, one. Right? I know. I know. It's going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are competing uh, at the highest level. I mean, yeah. all through, you know, college, you know, in the international, your, your club. I mean, everything's clicking, Yeah. you know, and, and again, I think it's the, it, in Jordan and Johnny and all of us talked about, and I'm sure you're going to say that very similar things, but culture <clears throat> matters. Yeah. So when you chose Michigan, it was the culture yeah. that you were attracted to. Yeah. Yeah. And not the other guys saying we need you is like, I want to be a part of something where I can, that I'm not necessarily, not necessarily need it, but I, there's a culture there that's, that I'm right. attracted to. Culture was a big one. Another big one. And I'm, I'm not even afraid to say it was, um, opportunity. Mm. You know, I mean, I had opportunity to go to other colleges. I mean, I told my, okay. So I, my, both my sisters are the geniuses, very, very okay. smart people. Um, and I was going to get like, basically like a, very very good scholarship go to eastern and my sister's like are you kidding me like mm -hmm. that's you going to college for free <laughs> yes mm -hmm. absolutely and um i'm like listen like i can i can get into eastern i couldn't have got into michigan just kind right. of by myself and i'm like even if i flunked like i could always transfer <laughs> yeah know? Like, but this is like i mean this is a big opportunity you're gonna bite off more than you can chew and chew it mm -hmm. or i mean you're crash and burn and i got into michigan and Again, I told you I, hit, I took my lumps, but I ended up thriving. And that's good. If I could go back and do it again, I'd go to Michigan again. Absolutely. And I, I think that that's a, a great, another great example. And I, I, I want to ask you how I watch you as a wrestler. And my theory and part of what we're doing here, my theory is you are the man that I see wrestle. I think that I can see a little bit of everybody's soul when they're on the mat hmm. because they're exposed in a way that they're not, you know, we can dress up and go play a part anywhere, right? We can do that. We can hang out with friends and make ourselves. When you get on the mat, there is a, tr a realness and a truth that's being told right. unlike anything else. So I watch you wrestle and I know your style. I want to know in your, in your opinion, because you know yourself better than anybody, are you a risk taker? huge right okay and i would have said watching you wrestle absolutely yeah so when you're out there and you're wrestling give me the mindset is tell me what i know i've wrestled my almost entire life i know it's our thoughts are different we think we think a million things but you can hardly ever articulate anything that we've ever thought mm -hmm. but what's going through your mind are you the guy that goes thumb block thumb block wait or are you going opportunity let's go right yeah i mean it's so that's a tricky thing, and you could you probably know this 
also it's like when you do something you've been training your entire life for and when you're actually competing you don't have time to really think right it's kind of just muscle memory you're out there yes. and you're acting um i think back to guys i wrestle you know um for example a guy like jordan oliver mm -hmm. also very explosive very. fast you know unpredictable mm -hmm. and all i was thinking about is you know like proper hand placement but the minute that hand comes up there's an opportunity right mm -hmm. and you, that's um i think t mastering the art of timing and everything yes. like that like, the one bad shot you make him pay for it yes you know but also don't be afraid to, to pepper off your attacks like that also um and that's kind of why i'm very upset about my world team trials performance is because yeah. i feel like i was so reserved you know okay. like i i'm over here wrestling zane rutherford in a hand fighting battle yeah like me peppering my attacks like yep you're, you'd be a, a maniac to wrestle Zane Rutherford in a hand fighting battle. Right. Like that's what he likes. That's what he that's likes. wants to do. Yeah. So that's what one thing that's kind of kicking me right now is um, there is a strategy to high level wrestling. Not the best mm -hmm. guy wins every day. Right. Of course. Right? Especially at this level. Right. right? Um, but in the end of the day, I think when I wrestled best, I wrestled guys like Haji Aliyev. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Made the Olympic finals that year. Yeah. Um, and I beat him, and I was just going to. I'm going to score some points in this guy. Yes, we're going to see what happens. You know, absolutely. And I lit him up, dude. I had like a six point lead on him. You know, that, like, and that's all attributed to you just pulling the trigger. Yeah, I Not, was in control. You were in control. And I again, wrestling is one of those things where I coach that we want to win or lose our match, not somebody else's match. Yeah, because as a competitor, I, I know that I've wrestled so many matches where I've won, but gotten beat because I've stayed in the match the way they wanted to do it. And I've eat, you know, I've got it by just, you know, won by a couple points, but if I would out wrestle, my match would have been over or I've lost matches that maybe I should have won because I was cautious. Right. I was waiting. I was afraid. So, so I know exactly what you're talking about. So when you're out there, is it, and I think I know the answer to this, but I want to hear, I want to hear from you. How much is faith and how much is fear? Do you have, is there fear out there? I'm, I'm never scared when I wrestle. Good I mean, deal. always, I mean, uh, even like guys, I see you, Spencer Lee, Poster, yeah. Ray, all these guys, like, I think everyone gets that pre-nervous oh, yeah. jitters. Yeah, right before the match. I mean, it's, I think it's maybe like a hormonal response yeah. or something. Yep. I can't, I can't find I've done my whole life at Silk Mountain. Right, right? Yeah. Um, But in the middle of a match, as soon as that whistle blows, it's like blink slate. Mm -hmm. I have some random thoughts sometimes, you know, like, if I'm like in the deep water match, I'm like, I'm breathing too heavy right now. I got to control my breathing. Mm. But no, I'm not scared. I'm just, I'm just responding to these kind of situations. Yes. Um, and I think it's probably what helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I love wrestling. Mm -hmm. many, many you start thinking, I mean, it goes back to you, even, I listen to this podcast by UFC fighters. You can tell like the minute they start like mouth breathing. You can see it. And then they start like, it's they're gasping. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about breathing. Mm -hmm. Like they're not efficient anymore. It's yeah. that lag time. Absolutely. So I just, again, I try to make my life as like efficient, especially my wrestling as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what I mean. Middle of a match, I'm not thinking. I'm just acting, reacting, reacting. just little, little key thoughts. Yep. You know, move your feet. You know, hand placement. Yeah, and like you said, it's muscle memory. You've right. done the work, right? And and that's something that I I I'll, I'll try to impress on my young wrestlers and my high school wrestlers is that when you put in the work, you get the opportunity to go basically just do what you your your body's already prepared to do. Right, like you said, it kicks in. When like you said, when you're out there, you you're not. It's not like oh, that's a. Weird, I'm gonna think about this one. I'm gonna no. You're literally just on autopilot doing your thing at yeah. the highest level. Right. And I think someone like you that's competing at this level, it is even even it's, it's at the at the peak, the pinnacle about you know. And when I say autopilot, I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just your your take your body's just taking over. Yeah. You know, because if you think like you say, if you think it's it's too late in this sport. You know, it's it's just response, response. It's you can't again. We know this. Like multi, the reason why you can't text and drive, like, <laughs> yes. like multitasking, is not efficient. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, and I, I think that also it's it's you know I know Johnny talks about being in a in a pure state. Mm -hmm. Like the minute when he says is was a three, three two, two one, one yeah. and it's just like blank slate. And I got a taste of that because I, I that's another thing about me is I'm a huge adrenaline junkie. Okay, you know Johnny actually I was almost got my skydiving license. I was talking about getting really the, the reason I didn't was because you have to jump so much or you yeah. lose your license. Oh, okay, and I'm like I I can't. So I can't you jump. but you have jumped. Oh, I've jumped. Oh, and, and, sick. and I'm in this jump. I, I'm falling like twenty thousand feet, and I'm just like zoned in like mm -hmm. you know I've, i ride a crotch rocket and i've, I've taken to the racetrack i've i've dragged my knee on the ground like wow and in that in that situation i mean you're going 70 miles per hour with your knee dragging on the ground you want to be like oh like freaking right. out like, you know but you can't 
you got to just stay calm and be like, oh. So that's <laughs> so it's interesting. So you're 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 going right off like Johnny said, like being present, only there. Yep, is is a key to success. Yeah, I I, I saw a lot of these like most successful like feats in the world. Mm-hmm. People like black out; they don't remember it. Right, they're just, they're just like acting. They're just like something just takes over, and they and they do these incredible feats. You know, look at look at I mean free throwers and. Yeah, and, and the NBA, like, right? Do you think they th- see all the distractions going on? Mm-mm. No, they're just they're just doing what they've always trained to do. Right, you know? that's life. Like, if you if you train enough to be efficient to act without even thinking about acting, like, I and you find so, yourself in the situation where you need to use that, like, yeah. it's gonna take care of itself. Yeah, it's efficient. You that's know? good. I like that. So efficiency is like it's like num- one of the top ones for you. But it's discipline. It comes from discipline. It comes from discipline. You Absolutely, got, you got to develop it. How much of that comes from like? Do you have to love something and be passionate about something to be able to be that present? Yeah. Well, I think passion definitely helps for sure. Yeah. I, I think um, being stubborn enough can help. You know, one thing I did and I have no ambition to do again right now is I ran a marathon. Um, oh. Right when COVID happened and we couldn't wrestle and I'm like, I got to do something like okay. sucks. It's hard. Yeah. I got I to gotta get that wrestling kick because mm. I mean- when you're in the wrestling room and you're in a deep match, like you have that like empty, the empty blank slate. And I didn't have that. I was locked inside my house. Right. Yeah. So I started running a distance running. I'm, I'm, <sighs> I'm like, I did a 15 mile run. And then at an 18 mile run, I'm like, I'm just going for the kill. I'm going for the marathon. <laughs> and uh, I got up and ran a marathon the next day. And, wow. How and did you train much for it? Or just, no, I did a 15 mile run, 18 oh, mile so, run. Then so that's it. Okay. I'm like, I already did like a half marathon. I might as well do the whole oh, thing. Oh man. It's like within a week time frame. Too. Wow. I, I ran like a good amount of miles that week. Yeah, that's incredible. I have always said, because I, I ran cross country my senior year because I broke my leg in football my junior year. Mm-hmm. And I wanted, you know, wrestling was my sport. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to play football and get hurt before my senior year. So I ran cross country. And I've said that distance running has a similar, like, mental th- part that, that is like re- wrestling. Like you said, that when you empty the tank yeah. and you find out what's left, yeah, that happens when you get deep in a run. Yeah. You know, and the, the, the I mean, you think back to any of these stuff that, like, I look at, like, the most addictive sports. Like, mm-hmm. I know skydiving is kind of one of yeah. them. But, I mean, I'm talking, like, the big three I find are cyclists or nuts. Mm-hmm. They are. I mean, they are diehard cyclists. Yeah. Uh, rock climbers are all in a Very rock, true. All in rock climbing. Yeah. Um, And, I mean, I guess those are like really the two big, yeah. big two ones yeah. I would look at. I'm sure I'm, I'm missing so, another one right now. Um. I guess disc golf people like disc oh, golf all the time. Dude. I got a few yeah. guys in the wrestling team. Yeah. Just, that's all they do. Is disc yeah, golf. that's a fun one. But anyways, those two things. Anyways, um, like you, you can't afford to think. You got to just be able to like control what the exact situation you're in mm-hmm. and react. Yeah. You know, mountain biking is it's going quick. Yeah. You know, climbing yep. it's like you just got to think about where your foot's going, where your hands going, and yeah. You know, and it's a, and it's a it's a personal like um it's a personal feat too. Every time mm-hmm. you make every time mm-hmm. you make that one that one dyno jump yep. or you you shave a second off your, your rock climb or your um, bike biking time yep. it's like it's big for you, you absolutely know? it's huge and i i mean you're hitting on some really good stuff here and one i want to make sure that we uh, you know we really emphasize is that the fact that you're saying that you have you like rock climbing you got to be so you can't be thinking about the day you had you can't be thinking like my boss made me mad my wife did this because it's detrimental to your life right I think that we have to find that some some sense of urgency in our in everything we do right. that it that we become that focus because without that I don't think you can break that invisible ceiling. Right. What's your thoughts on that? Um. Well, okay. But jujitsu was the third one. I was. That's I was forgetting. that's a good one. Jujitsu yeah, yeah, guys yeah. are nuts. That's yes, all they do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I refuse to do it right now because I know you will be in I, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna start You're gonna all this. Yeah, yeah. So I refuse to do it. Um. But yeah, if you can have a passion. If you, I'm a big believer. If you have a reason why to do something, so your why is important. If you're why, if you know, and if you really know your why, mm. you know, like, do you, I, do you think many people know their why? No, I think I think they're told a why, mm. but they don't actually believe it. They don't actually know why they're doing something. They're just doing it because they're told that they're supposed to do it. Ah, uh, that's you know? good. No one told me to go run a marathon, and I'm like, I'm doing this because it is insane. I mean, I picked the hottest day of the year to do it. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, you like fully I'm, I'm like, dude, I wanted to do something that like any person would look at and be like, you're a psycho. And I'm like, yes, I am. I'm not a, I'm not an ordinary person. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Know? And I, I it actually, and that's what I was going to say. It, it actually, it's kind of a fail safe now. In time, I'm cutting weight. It's like 5am, you know, I'm in a cold gym. 
I'm not breaking a sweat. I've got to lose three pounds. And yeah. I'm like, dude, if I can go run t- like over 27 miles, I can, I can run a little bit faster than the treadmill. Yeah, like I, I've true. done, I've done some shittier things, <laughs> yeah, you know? Exactly. So, um, yeah, you embrace those shitty things. Yes. Life gets a little bit less shitty. That's how I keep telling That's people. True. I'm like, just embrace the suck you know that, bro like like <laughs> that we like we got goggins book back there behind you, you it. yeah it's such can't a good one can't, yeah can't, hurt, can't me. hurt me yeah. yeah and and he talks about embracing the suck in in our wrestling room we we call it attacking your zero yeah right so like you're you're probably one of the the stockier built guys that you know that, that i've been around even as wrestlers right a lot of wrestlers carry a lot of muscle but you're you're very stocky you may not have a lot of areas where you're like, ah, my, my quads suck or whatever. But a lot of guys, you see they skip leg day or whatever, you know, that whole right. thing. It's because most people, they want to go in, they want to work the muscles that look good. They yeah. want to work the chest. They want to work the arms because they're good at it. Yep. You know, and I talked about my wrestlers like, okay, if you tell me, if I say, hey, guys, where do you guys want, what do you guys want to do today? Let's work top. I know that you hate being on bottom mm-hmm. and you probably don't like being neutral. So we're not going to be on top. Right. We're going to be, those, we're attacking our zero. You're not going to grow there. Right. I, I got Oh, we were doing some, um, this week we have a kid from Russia in the wrestling room. Okay. And we were doing some just short goes starting in upper body. Mm-hmm. And he did like a very sneaky, like, it was a lat drop, but it was like a sneaky, mm-hmm. it was like a, maybe like a five. He got me good. <laughs> yeah. And I said, I'm like, get back in there again. Like, I, I got to feel, like, how yeah. did you do that? Yeah. Like, Cause clearly you just expose the heck out of me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not good right. I didn't like being in that position. Right. And, um, that's probably another big reason why I got, I keep continuing to get better. Like, I, I, th- I think every year I become better. Um, some people start to taper off, especially mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, I mean, maybe when they get to college or especially in the senior level, like it, there's a huge, yeah. but, um, it's cause I, I'm, I'm a constant, I'm like, I'm like, this is a weakness. I need to, I need to improve on it. So and, you're always attacking your weak, weaknesses, you know, and this is, so this is the biggest, um, you know, the, the Achilles heel to wrestling, I would say is you can never be good enough. Mm. You know, you look at, look at a guy like Sergey Belgaz, mm-hmm. he's like a four, a three time Olympic champ, five time world champ. And he'd probably be like, I, I probably could have won another. I probably could have won another. Or yeah. I, I was happy with this, you know, because um, that's, what, that's what, to be successful, you have to be kind of a nut and you have yep. to be very, very like, you know, self, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They have to be very like, um, your own worst critic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? And this is, and this was something I struggled with. I'm like, I'm always like, dang, I didn't do good enough, you know, but I'm like, I mean, I, I exceeded my expectations, but what my expectations change mm-hmm. and I look at a guy like this, is, this is the biggest thing I would tell. And you know, I have ne- I never told him to his face. I should tell him. You got like Logan Steber. Yeah. I almost respect for him because that dude, like he won everything he wanted to win. He's like, I've done it all. I'm done. Cause yeah, I know, I know if I keep going, I'm going to want more and more and more. I'm going to go down this hole yeah. where my health might start to bleed or my, or I might just start getting beat. I might leave on a losing streak. Mm-hmm. I'm like, listen, I'm happy with what I've done. I t- time to walk away. That's so hard That's to respectful. do. That's yeah. respectful. That is that is um that is very hard to do. Yeah, you, very few people retire on a on a win. Yeah, like James Green. I think James Green when he retired was wrestling the best he's ever wrestled. Bro, oh yeah, for sure. I thought he looked great. He looked great. Um, yeah, and I think he still has unfinished business. I wouldn't be surprised if he can find his way in to yeah. wrestle again. Um, but I mean, the run that guy had. I mean, you gotta you gotta look back at your career and be like, from his family up- upbringing mm. to being. What a ten time world <laughs> world team member, like dude, that's re- it's insane. It is insane. It's insane. Respect, respect, absolutely. And and I, and I like what you're saying there, because I think I think unless we're willing to look look at our weaknesses, we can't we can't become the best version of ourselves. It's right. impossible. Right, you're only as you're only as strong as your weakest point, you know. Right. And something else we say, it's like a, a rope can be a hundred foot long, but if it's got a fray at the first foot, yep. any tension you break, where where you where you you're you're frayed, right? Yeah. And that's emotionally too. Like a lot, of, you know, a lot of people are like I don't know why my life keeps sucking, but you know they got hurt by somebody when they're 13 years old. You know, I do a lot of counseling stuff with my other with other work. You get somebody that's hurt, you know, when they're 13 years old and they get that wound. And then they're 30 some years old and they wonder why they keep reverting back it's because anytime they get pressure put on them, they've never went back and revisited that. Right. And they break at that point again. Right. You know, I mean, if you're going to, uh, we're going to philosophical here and we, I, we I need agree to. with it. Yeah, because absolutely. I agree because going back to what I said about, you know, um, my relationships and, and weeding out the people. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I'm, at this point in my life, like I look at my friends, I'm around who mm-hmm. I spend the most of time around. Mm-hmm. That's you're going to be like, yep. And I'm like, these guys are like some special ops, dude. Like these are like, if I'm, if I'm going to pick the, the elite guys in this wrestling yes. room, 
Like I hang out with Sergey Belgovs of Alex Derringer, Jaden Cox. Like these are the dudes yeah, I'm around. Surgeons. Like, like yeah, these are some some Navy SEALs. Yeah, they are. And I like it. That's that's what I want because I want to be a I want to be one of these elite guys. Right. You know. So some of these people who um you know they don't have the success they want. The big thing is what what can they control? Right. Mm-hmm. That's what the guy mm-hmm. had to realize. What mm-hmm. can you influence? Mm-hmm. And the people you're around, the, the little like hardships that they have project on you. If if, if you mm-hmm. don't think about it, you just. It, they, they might be like, oh, today sucks, you know, and like maybe today didn't suck, but now you're thinking, well, does today suck? Like that's right. a, that's, that's a you know little things that adds up. Absolutely, there's only so many. There's that book uh, Mark Mark Manson makes. Ever read it? It's called The Sublard Not Giving a Fuck. Oh yeah, yeah, yes. He, he talks about there's only like so many fucks you can give in a day, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you'd be very critical about about what you're actually caring about. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. That's really good, and and you're right because. We don't really realize how much the outside world has an effect on our inner person, right? Yeah. We're we're around so much negativity, around so many people. Failing to me is not a negative thing, right? Failing, if you learn, it's it's, it's an incredible thing. But most people are just recip- just going in a circular motion around their failure, the whole yeah. you know over and over. And you are again; those are your best friends. Yeah. And you wonder sometimes, and again, I'm not saying I got to break, you know, my friendships, whatever, but most of my friendships, if I really look at them, I'm, I got to ask myself, like, where, where are they taking me? Yeah. What are they, what a lot of them aren't even really founded in anything other than, Hey, let's go out and have a, have a drink. Right. And talk about how bad our life is. Right. You're like, I like what you're saying. Get the, get the snipers, man. Dude, you know, that, again, it's that, I don't know. I, and here's the thing. This is philosophical here. At the end I of the love day, that. at the end of the day, and I just got done reading um, called Meditation by Marcus mm-hmm. Aurelius. Mm-hmm. Very famous. Are, are you familiar with? Oh that yeah. Well? Okay. So, um, so for people who don't know, they're listening. It's, this dude's a, the Roman emperor. He's the most powerful person on the planet. And he talks about. It, he's like, this isn't up, up to everything. It makes it out to be. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, I'm gonna die. Like, mm-hmm. what's this all for? So I think about that on a daily basis. I'm like, listen, at the end of the day, this is just one big game. Yeah. Right. You might as well control this game the best you bet. I mean, that, that if you can be an old man and you die or even young man, whatever, right. but you say you lived your life exactly yes. how you wanted wanted to, you did everything you wanted and you have no regrets. Yes. Beautiful. I love it. That's where I'm at. Yes. Right? So I'm pursuing wrestling right now because yep. I think I can keep going. If yep. I walked away, I, I've been given coaching jobs. I've been giving places. I've been giving more than double amount of money to leave Cliff Keen mm. and go to different RTCs. Wow. But I'm like, listen, Sergey Belagaz is in this room, Kevin Jackson in this room, and all these different guys. I'm like, how naive would I be to yeah. leave when these guys are at my re- at my disposal mm-hmm. to pick their minds? When they're because they're going to be done coaching in a few years, they'll be right. done, right? And I'll look back and be like, dang, I wish I would have learned more from them. Yeah, for sure. So, and, the, and what they're imparting on you is so much more valuable than any dollar or right. whatever. And in those seeds, what I what I think is in another thing that I love about wrestling that it is a delayed gratification, huge. In we live in a culture where gotta have it my way right now, right? Right. So I have a hard time keeping high school wrestlers and junior high wrestlers because it's it's nice to go out and hit a three a three pointer and a crowd sure. go wild. That's instant gratification, right? Like we all grew up playing basketball. We understand what that means. Put this in that you know hoop, and everybody likes that, right? Yeah. Wrestling, it's like plant the seeds for years, and then you get a a sick takedown, and and then you get four people in the audience like ooh. You know, like, like the gyms are empty, right? And there's no like big money in wrestling. Yeah. Again, I do it as my profession right now. Right. I mean, I, I'm not worried about money as far as, you know, I also live within my means, you know, but there's no NFL and NBA right. you go into. You have to, right. Well, then you go into is, you know, MMA, mixed martial arts, but mm-hmm. like I've been in fights. I don't like getting hit in the head. Like, <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you have any aspirations to be in the fight world? Here's your thing. I, again, the jujitsu, yeah. I know if I get started in it, I'm going to go down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's where I refuse to start because the minute I do, it's, you're going to you know, love it. Um, but again, I've been in a few fights. I'm not going to say I started them, but I've been in a few fights in my yeah. life. And um, it's one of those things where it's just kind of like, like I wasn't ever thinking about losing the fight. Right. But I'm just like, this doesn't seem like a very like enjoy, mm. enjoy, like, thing. yeah, yeah, I didn't enjoy yeah. as much as wrestling. Right. I was in blank slate. I was kind of a little more like, maybe because it's foreign to me. I don't True. Know. And also, it probably has a lot to do with the fact that if you're in a fight, so there's a difference between fighting, like in the street. Okay. So maybe that was, yeah, it too. yeah. And yeah. because again, it, the, the, the risk is different, right? You're yeah. you're out there, and somebody picks a fight, or you get into a, a, a scuffle. It is survival. It yeah. is what's going on. Trying to, and you are in this place where going back to it, we're trying to think our way through it. Right. What's happening? What's going on? You got to look at the sport of fighting. 
in mixed martial arts is you've prepared just like you with a wrestling match. It's not, you're not angry. You're going out and it's muscle memory. It's yeah. a chess game. You're figuring out now, obviously there is things being thrown you know, but it, it feels completely different in all the fighters I've talked about. It doesn't most, I'd say 99.99% of them aren't in what you we would consider a street fight. Yeah. You're talking me into it. Man. Yes, I, I know people are gonna be like, well, Hey, what'd you do? That's, yeah. that's what I'm like. I'm like, I kind of want to try this now, you know? Um, and that, well, you're built for it. That's an untapped. I don't know. I don't, I don't know much of a reach. It doesn't matter, but you look at someone, you know, like Michael Chandler. Yeah. Come on. You and Michael Chandler could be twins. Yeah. You're built the same. You're fast. You're, you're, you're explosive. You know, um, I, I, I've got a lot of buddies. My, but my, I have some good buddies own Michigan top team. Oh, and nice. they've been dying to get me into this room and grapple with them. And I'm like, I know like you, you got wrestling. It yeah. won't be a problem, but yeah. like, those, those dudes are hitting, throwing punches and kick so hard they break their own bones. So yeah. it's, it's like... It's a different beast, for know, sure. For um, sure. Maybe down the road. But yeah. not, I, I didn't go to U of M, you know, a really, right. really good school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To yeah. get my brain, yeah. you know, I understand. Operating. I understand, for sure. Now, the, the you, you you touched on something that I guess got to circle back to it real fast because I, I, I yeah. know there's a lot of truth to this. Um, but in wrestling, we have... And Johnny calls it, and I'll use his term, chosen suffering. Yeah. We get to choose suffering constantly and like you said with the you went you couldn't get the suffering so you went out and found a run find found a run how, how important is that how important is chosen suffering i think tom ryan wrote a book called chosen suffering. so that's Could probably why it's yeah. probably why he, that's he, that see, culture well, right? i'll tell you this johnny will first he'll be the first day he goes i don't know hardly anything but i'll still everybody's everything yeah you know yeah. <laughs> which is awesome you know yeah. what though johnny johnny is living his life to <sighs> his, his own means man but again if and johnny's getting a lot of airtime on our podcast but if you watch him as a wrestler, yeah. he's the exact same way. Oh, yeah. He just throws it at you. Reckless. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. He's a funny thing about it. This is one thing he does, and even like Bryce Meredith and, you know, like I've spent a lot of time around these guys, mm -hmm. Reese Humphrey, mm -hmm. you know, all these guys yeah. who live these very, like, essential <laughs> woo lives, yeah. you know. And one thing they, they always do is if they're going to go do something, like, mm -hmm. well, what else can we do when we're here? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that's, we don't need downtime. We'll keep going. Yeah. I ran a camp down in Florida, and Johnny and Julius went down there. He's like, well, let's go shark diving in the meantime. <laughs> you know, <he's laughs> Did you like, go? I actually didn't go because I had to catch a flight. Oh, um, that would be dope. Yeah, but I was going to go. And he's yeah. telling me all about this kind of crazy stuff. He's like, you can't show fear. Sharks have a seventh <laughs> sense. They can detect these like. He's, he gets so intense too about yeah. it. He will talk you into anything. He talked. I mean, I went skydiving. He, I mean, he sent a Did you see that I went skydiving? Did you go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, with him. Did you go with up him? Up in Cleveland. Yeah. Like, the, and again, he's getting a lot of airtime. He's, he's going to inflate him his head. But here, here's the thing. So more than it already is. No, I'm just joking. He's a humble dude. But so I'm up at, at Cleveland we're up at the uh, U20s and U23s up there and uh, he happens to be in town and so we, we get together and we're talking stuff like that and I'm like he had said before like you gotta jump with me sometimes it's like oh yeah 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 and and then I brought it up or something like that and he was like so he hits me up like at midnight he goes you wanna jump tomorrow yeah and I was like yeah, sure. But I had to ask, ask my wife. I was like, hey, babe, you care if I jump on? She's like, you're not jumping out of the airplane. <laughs> you know, so I had to convince her. Anyways, long story short, I jumped out of the airplane. Yeah. You know, so Johnny. No had, regrets, right? No I mean, regrets. No regrets. Yeah. No tomorrow. That's his yeah, merch. No so tomorrow. we're plugging his stuff. But yeah. Uh, but so, yeah. So again, going back to the, the original question, that yeah. chosen suffering. Chosen suffering. How much of that is necessary in, in, in your own life? And then just also, how do, you, how do you see it for the world? Right. And that's kind of like... I'm, I have to develop my own original ideas too because mm. I, I mean the amount of podcasts I've listened to of Goggins and yeah. Tim Kennedy all these different like super super hardcore dudes who yep. have done really really sucky things yeah. you know like it almost makes me like like dang maybe I should join the military <laughs> like it sounds like it sucks <laughs> you're um, getting talked into everything <laughs> dude I'm very I'm very influenced that's why I don't gamble thank that's god good, um, yeah. but yeah I mean I, the most rewarding things and anyone could say it has come from something that sucked. Absolutely. It. You know, I mean, like even if you, if you, sure, I'm guessing winning the lottery would be nice. You could do just yeah. like that. But if you earn, if you, you build a company that makes millions of dollars mm -hmm. versus you win millions of dollars. I don't know. I, I can't say I've done it. Right. Because it may, you might be like, look at what I built. Sure. Versus, um, you know, look at what I just got. Yeah. And I actually, I, I realized this, um, early on in, in middle school i went on this hike mm. it was um actually in zion national park okay and i did um the narrows i don't know if people are familiar it's basically it's a, just a long walk it's pretty you know but it's like really long there's no no, no summit okay and then there's one where you could do like a summit and it's called angel's landing it's like really hard to get up there okay and i realized i'm like this is way more fulfilling to me um to have like an end goal like it sucked mm. but like the you it paid off like look at your view right versus just like just going 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 with like no reason why yeah you know yeah. um 
So I'm all for like suffering, yeah. but you have to know why you're doing it. If you just, like, why, if yeah. you just submit yourself to like, just always like grind, 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 grind nonstop. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some people, like, I mean, um, example, Carrie Colop. Yeah, you know, that dude embraces the grind, but he doesn't yeah. seem like a very happy person. Right? <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, I don't, I don't know him personally. Yeah. You know, I, I really don't know him personally. Um, but he's intense. That's one thing. Maybe I would maybe not have been a good fit for Iowa. Like just the constant grind. Mm. I think um, you got to step back a little bit, live life a little bit. You know, understand why you're doing something. Right. And you like the balance. I like the balance. I think yeah. I think it's important. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, you do need to do thing, things that suck. Yeah, you I need to. I think in some of the hardest things I've ever been through in my entire life, you know, death of family members or, or you just, you know, yeah. just, you know, I've been married for you know, almost 25 years and oh. had, I have a 23 year old daughter and a 20 year old son, you know, like the, I've been through these things and I will tell you, you can learn how to struggle better. Yeah. Like it's like, it's almost like you get the reps in, in the gym. Like you start off at 135 or one, you know, whatever. It's hard. And then it gets easy. And then by the, you know, a few months into it, you're repping that no problem. Right. I think suffering, my theory is suffering's the same way. Mm -hmm. It's not that it ever, it ever gets easy, like completely easy, but it, you learn to do it better. Yeah. You know, when you started wrestling, it was, you thought you were dying. Yeah. And there's times that you still do, but you've learned how to embrace that differently. Maybe is yeah, that, it's been quote. I mean, to, to even to live is to suffer. I mean, literally, yeah. unless you stay in bed all day, like it's, you're going to have to stress yourself at some point, even get out of bed to go b make food, you yeah. know, like, so if you can control how you react to your suffering mm -hmm. and, and change, this is a big thing I had to develop too, especially okay. at U of M because, um, I think any college town is kind of a bubble, right? There's mm -hmm. some people who have only been lived these pompous lifestyles who have had everything given to them. But then there's some people who like, um, like make me who didn't ex expect to even be here. I'm just grateful to be involved. Yeah. And one thing I did kind of realize is like a 10 is a 10 is mm -hmm. a 10. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, I mean, yes, yeah, so you know, but what it means is like a, a level of 10 stress is a level of 10 regardless. Okay. People in Afghanistan right now getting bombed, like their level of 10 of stress is probably way different than our level of 10. That's mine's, true. mine's running a marathon. Mine's running 27 miles. That's right. one of the hardest things I've done. You're right. Whereas these guys are literally fighting for their life. Right. And it's, it's not any like, I can't say there's worse or difference. Just this is, this is what I've been exposed to. Right. So I found when I expose myself to as much, as much shitty stuff as possible, mm -hmm. it makes normal life seem way easier. Right. And a big thing that re kind of backed this up was my buddy Zeb Hilliard. He's now a Navy SEAL. He's going for SEAL Team 6. Oh, wow. Bad dude, bad dude. Yeah. But he's just the most stoic, un unshakable person I've ever met. Now, mm. after he got back, he's just like, he's just, you know, everything he says is very concise, right. short to the point. Like, nothing like shakes him. He's like, I know what's important, what isn't important. I'm mm. like, if I can get to that, like, that, that's just efficiency of just yeah. not worrying about all this little petty stuff. And it's so hard to do now with social media. It I mean, is. Everyone's telling you this is a problem, this is a problem. But is it? You right. Know, like, yeah. So, yeah, chosen suffering I think is very important because I think you need to make your 10 get pushed back. I think you need to keep pushing back the wall because um, it's going to make your life easier and then you can be a happier person because right. things don't bother you as much. I think that was probably the mind behind Gable's quote, once you've wrestled, everything else is easy. Exactly, precisely. Yeah, I mean, obviously he doesn't mean that, you know, that 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 everything in life is easy because obviously that doesn't, but it, I think it does make everything easier. Yeah. You know, Um and and again, if you're watching and you're listening, you're not not a wrestler. You don't have to be a wrestler. It's right. it's choose your suffering, right? Go out, do hard things. Right. It will make the things that come at you because inevitably we're all going to suffer. Yeah. Somehow, some way. Yeah. It'll make those things. Again, I think what you're saying, the efficiency. You almost become it almost becomes more orderly. Yeah. Suffering becomes more orderly. You can control it a little more in your mind, and you the way you respond to it's differently. Right. It's still a ten. Right. But you're efficient right i like that right um yeah I, and again i I'm, I'm a big believer even even nowadays like i i try to find things that i haven't done in, in like again i ran 27 miles i was supposed to and this is the biggest thing about it, is i my course was to be 30 miles okay and the minute i i 27 miles my legs are just toast they're cramped out i couldn't i couldn't bend my knees especially because i didn't train for it <laughs> yeah and the minute i i called and i got in the car and drove home um i'm like i should have ran 30 mm. <laughs> you know yeah but um I, I think down the road, I'm probably going to do a, another thing, maybe a Spartan race or yeah, those are cool. some triathlon mm -hmm. or something that like ordinary people don't do. Right. 
you know, because I think I, I owe it to myself. Like, I don't have the right to be happy with how I am. Right. I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not content. Yeah. That's a difference. I think that that's a big point, though. I think contentment is, like you just said, I think contentment is something that we got to we gotta kind of try to avoid. I, I got these little sayings all the time, but I believe comfort is evil. Com- you ever heard the term comfort's a slow death? Oh yeah, Love yeah, that. yeah. It's, and it's I think it's I think it's true, right? Like, yes. if we if we get comfortable in our in ourselves, a lot of times that's when we put on our extra weight, or we you know financially start to struggle, or right. we get comfortable in our marriage and bad things happen. You right. know, like I always want my marriage to be a little edgy, like yeah. not like I, mean, I trust my, my wife and I are are, are are incredible, but I want to date my wife. I yeah. want to. My wife will say something. So she's you know my biggest cheerleader. I've said this I think in every podcast now, but I'll walk around a corner sometime. I'll have be wearing a hat that she didn't expect me to wear, and she'll get red because she gets in, she she sees me almost like she saw me for the first time. Yeah, and I want that right. That's so, great. Yeah, that's what we want. So being uncomfortable is a good thing. Huge. You know, I, I still want to get butterflies when I see my wife. You yeah. know, I still I still am trying to figure out how to be the best dad. Right. My kids are grown. I right. still want to con- I want to pursue that. Yeah. I don't want to be like, well, it did it? They're out of the house. Yeah. You know. So I think you're I think you're 100 percent right. I think we there's, have to. There's a term I was called, and it's because I was called this, and how I thought about it is exactly why I was called. It's called okay. to- toxically positive. Toxically positive. And I was told I was toxically positive in a demeaning way. Oh, but really? I looked at him like, that's good. That's yeah, good, right? Toxic yeah. positive. Like I'm like always good. Like no matter what, there's a silver lining. Mm-hmm. Like what it actually meant is like I like I can't like talk to people in a way that isn't like um what's the word? Compassion. Uh, uh, not not compa- like, I'm compassionate, but like I can't like fully process like a pain that might be going through because I'm just looking at the silver lining to it. Oh, uh, okay. Right? Yeah. And I'm I I am still trying to work out if it's a good or bad thing. For me, I think it's a good thing because it just helps me realize that things do like yeah the fan i'm still good to go i don't think i I would think what they're trying to say and i don't know that i mean i i don't know you personally but just usually get a sense of this but i think what they're trying to say is that you lack empathy empathy is a good one yeah yes and and what i would say is empathy typically empathy has to do with um like commonality yes we we can share the same experience where i can understand it yeah that's where i empathize with you and but that I, basis was pain, and I don't experience pain the same way they did. Right, That's but this, what it was. but none of us experience pain the same way, right? Correct. You know, I lost my father, you know, unexpectedly when, whenever he was fifty two years old, and I dealt with that my way. You, you know, thankfully you have your dad, but if yeah. something wasn't the, the the way, we can have a conversation about it. And we can right. empathize with each other, but the pain's still different, right? You know, right. And I would love the fact that you're optimistic, right, and positive, right. Yeah, so I say boo to their a tens of ten, a tens of ten <laughs> again, tens regardless. Tens, yeah. I don't know. I a lot to process. I mean, at the end of the day, like I'm happy with who I am. Yeah. I, I this is the thing too. My dad told me that last week, and he just said it to me randomly, and mm-hmm. like stopped. And I'm like, heard what he said. He goes, Alec. He's like, I know you weren't happy with your world team trials performance, but he actually said to me, he's like, you exceeded all the expectations I ever had for you. Wow. And more than that, I'm proud of the man you became. And like again, my dad is like. Of stoic figures, like my, I've never seen my dad cry. Like that mm. dude, that dude is like, I mean, he's, he's just like his dad. Who was, you show up to work, you don't, you don't complain. My, my dad missed two days of work in twenty years when I want to wow. say a title and when I think I was my sister was being born. Like, like you know, so for him to say like he's yeah. proud of who I became, I'm, clearly I might be doing something right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because yeah. you know, yeah. so that's kind of what I think about. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's good stuff, man. And I'm, I'm glad that you and your dad had that moment because when people, and again, your dad's probably felt that forever. Yeah. But articulate, like, I, and I can kind of, I can kind of, again, I can kind of understand where he's coming from because sure. there's a lot of times that in my head, I've said a thousand things. Yeah. And even when it comes to like my wife, I'll be like, you know, I'll go through the day, whatever, and she'll be wearing this outfit or whatever. And she's like, it'll be 10 o'clock at night. We're going to get ready to bed. She goes, you didn't say nothing about my way. I'm like, I thought, <laughs> well, you all, thought, I about thought all day how hot she yeah, was, yeah, you know? Yeah. But sometimes us as men, and again, this is another lesson we can we can throw out there, is just because it's up here doesn't mean that it, it doesn't need to come out here, Yeah. right? It's like we need to learn to verbalize. And again, I think with, with wrestling, I can think of a thousand things, but yeah. sometimes I got to say them, right? right. Like I, positive reinforcement to myself, like, you know, I can do, like literally coming out of my mouth, I'm going to do, Yeah. right? Not just think it. There's a different thing, right? Like, yeah. do, have, do you do you verbalize your goals? I have, a, I have a goal. Okay, so my that's another big thing, too. I had a goal poster, a vision board, it was mm. called, per se. 
I read that book, The Secret. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was all yeah, about yeah. manifesting. <laughs> Let's go, you yeah. know. And um, I didn't realize that on my on my vision board, mm -hmm. I put a big block M. It was just it was supposed to just show like college, college right? Wrestling. But it was an M. It was a block M. Um, and then it had a crotch rocket because I always wanted a crotch rocket. My parents told me, as long as you live in our house, you're not getting a motorcycle. <laughs> Minute I went to college, I bought a motorcycle like oh, that. Man. Um, I had that. Um, I had a USA wrestling uh, like flag up there, like emblem. Okay. Cause I wanted to represent the United States. I want uh, more than that. I wanted my name in the back of a singlet. I thought that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. And then, um, I had a few other stuff there, but I, I look back. I found it a couple years after, and I just made a junior world team. I went to U of M, and I had, by then, like, three different crash rockets. I was, I was just going through these different motorcycles, and I'm like, wow. That's sick. I did them all. That's and so cool. The other thing about that, since then, I haven't made a vision board. I you got to get on that. No, because I think now it's like, whatever I decide I want to do, I know oh, I can you, do it You now. can do it. I can so, do yeah, it. yeah. So, your vision board is your, is, it's, it's right there. I have it right here. Nice. You know, I don't need to be reminded of if, if it's a big enough why now mm -hmm. I don't need to be reminded of it. True. You know, and this is the biggest thing that kind of haunts me about like the sport of wrestling and like you have one bad day that why is I'm um, postponed to the next year. Yeah. That's you know? huge. That's huge. And I know you've already hit on this, but we got to talk about it a little bit, you know, so I, I came out to, to Vegas. I watched you, you know, well actually rewind. I went to the, uh, the Rudis. Yeah. The Rudis. Uh, uh, what was it? What was it called? The uh, super, match. super matches. Yeah. yeah. Super matches. Awesome. So I, yeah, incredible night. Yeah. First off, Rudis did an incredible job with awesome. that. Um, but I watched you and you go out and you wrestle, you know, an opponent in J.O. incredible opponent. Yeah. You get him that night. Yeah. Right. I talked to you after, afterwards a bit. You you know you're you're feeling good and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you go over to Vegas. You you do it again. Yeah. Right. Give me the, the give me the thought process because I mean Jay is somebody that you kind of you've you had some losses to. No. No, you have not. You haven't lost him. Three and zero against him. Three and zero. I thought you were one and two. I beat him at the eight man bracket. I was a late entry. Ah. Yeah. I didn't get the respect. And they're like, hey. We have a, we had a drop out. So Joey McKenna dropped out on this. You want to jump in and you like, got and I took third. You got, that's <laughs> yeah. right. I do now. So you're three and zero against him. Yeah. You got you you got his number. No, so does, I don't you, believe in that. But you, go on. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that I don't think I don't. I, I say that, but I'm the same way. I don't believe yeah. in it because each match is its own thing. Yeah. Because uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because the super match in Vegas, they kind of outcome the same, but similar. Yeah. But two different matches like in, yeah. in in the way you approached and the way you went after it you look good both now you go to the trials and you said you didn't have the best yeah what what do you is there anything that led up to that that maybe that you didn't feel right was you you know give me give me a little background i know that's a, that's a pain that's a, that's a local pain you know recent pain i like to know though because yeah. we can learn a lot in those moments for sure there's that saying a wise man learns more from his enemies than a fool from his friends yeah that's good right and I won. I won. I, I beat. I beat all the guys I needed to beat. I was yeah. the top dog going yep. in, feeling great. I thought everything was going great. I'm like, clearly, it's, I'm winning. Yeah. Um, but then I got exposed, right? And I got wrestled with Rutherford, and I wasn't wrestling. I wasn't feeling great that day. But then I, you know, I looked at my wrestling. I'm like, kind of how I wrestled him. Mm -hmm. It's exactly how I wrestled these past few tournaments that he wasn't at. But I won, mm. and I thought about him like my offense was not there. I was impossible to score on. It's very hard to score right. on. Yeah. Really good position, yep. you know. Um, but like, I'm actually an offensive wrestler, mm -hmm. and I thought back. I'm like, okay, when did I think I was wrestling best, and I think back to wrestled Haji Aliyev, and yes. the next match I wrestled James Green. I actually beat James Green. Yeah, it's incredible. And I was just, dude, I was throwing the sink. I was moving. Yes. I was, I, and the only thing I can think about is, again, I have no regrets because I did commit to our system. We did mm -hmm. leading up to this this cycle we're in right yeah. now, but. Clearly, I wasn't moving like how I did move two years ago or okay. a year ago. So my training was definitely a reflection, or my wrestling is a reflection of my training. Yeah. So um, moving forward, I think I need to change my training to maybe be doing more explosive attacks, not just relying on my defense, but also mm. on my offense. Right. Um, because I got Alexander Rutherford. You might not beat him offensively, but like he also beat me defensively. I, I can, right. he scored on me, and I can score on him. Mm. So I've got to find. He's he's a tough cat to figure out. I've, yeah. I've again my entire life. He's to win a national championship, to win, make a world team. He's the guy I had to beat mm -hmm. him or Nolf. Right. Both. You know, very similar wrestlers. Generationally yeah. good wrestlers. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
got to figure it out, you know? Um, and I will, it'll get figured out. Mm -hmm. I has to. Yeah. Um, what, it, what is it? For, is that like, a, is it, is it like a math problem to you? Are you, are you at the, are you literally back of the drawing board trying to figure, are you breaking this thing down or are you just concentrating on being the best version of you? Yeah. Well, you, I'm a, so at the end of the day, we talk about wrestling when you're wrestling there, it's, it's all about reacting mm -hmm. and acting, mm -hmm. right? So hopefully more acting than reacting, right? right? Um, and Zane acted more than I did. I think to wrestle a guy like Zane, you have to meet meet his intensity, and um, it's very hard to do because he brings intensity. The only, as far as I can see, maybe like two other people on the, on the planet do. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. So to do that, it's kind of like Rocky Four, man. You're gonna have to go through <laughs> hell, you know, like to get there. Um, um, which I'm prepared to do because I have to do it if I if I want to get what I have to. Yeah, you know. I like James Green, I beat James Green the last time I wrestled. He beat me three times before that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I realized him, he was a tactical change. Yeah. He, I actually wrestled in that same tournament at Poland. He beat me the first time and I wrestled in the finals cause I crossed over okay. and I beat him and my coach Bormet pulled me aside. He's like, Hey, listen, James is killing you on this underhook. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's doing the same thing in Burroughs though. He lulls you to the edge and yep. the minute you try and fight in, you're, you're already out. Right. He's like, I want you to change from your elbows like this, to elbows like this. Just uh oh, po uncle. just post. Yeah, exactly. And I thought, I'm like, exactly. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Um, just yeah. So simple hand placement. Yeah. He goes, also, I want you to score points right away. I don't want, I don't want you to be trying to, to you know, chase, chase. Yeah. He goes, James, James is too good defense. Mm. And right off the match, dude, I was just like, boom, lit him up, lit him up, lit him up. And then the rest of the match, hand placement, I kept him on his mama on his biceps, yep. not on his shoulders, mm -hmm. and it just made a world of difference. A tactical change, mm. you know. And I even think about it, it is tactical with Rutherford. I look, I look at he moves like crazy. He's really hard to get your yeah. hands on. But I realize he's kind of spastically moving. He's not mm -hmm. moving. There's no order. He, he's just moving to right. make movement, and it slowed me down because I was reacting, not mm -hmm. acting. Mm -hmm. Next time I wrestle, I'm gonna be like, well, it doesn't matter if he's moving. I'm just gonna still do my stuff to him. Right. I'll just double leg him, see, and he'll stop moving as much. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's that, and that's the game of math if you want yeah, to play sure. it that way. Well, I like it because what it comes back to is just you being the best version of you. So yeah. the math problem is solved by you being you. Yeah, you control what you can control. Yeah, absolutely. You know? That's good. I love that. One of those sayings, I want one of your, you know, responses to this, but what you what you tolerate dominates. Yeah. And what I what I get from that is and what I tell people is like if we cheat in this area of our life, it bleeds in all areas of our life. Yeah. And so as a top wrestler, wrestler in the United States and in the world, I, I would venture to say that you believe that and you probably try to keep your compromises to a minimal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think tolerating, I mean, even to believe in something, like really believe in something mm -hmm. in today's world is such a hard thing to do because mm -hmm. there's so many counterpoints of why you're wrong. There's so yeah. many people saying why you're right. Mm -hmm. And then you talk about, is it insensitive to even think about this kind of stuff, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a few things that I like, I, I'm not willing to compromise on. Yeah. And, and there's a few things that like, you know, as far as tolerate, like I don't, that's a big thing I've got into is I don't like tolerate my time being wasted. Mm. That's you good. Know, I, I, and it's not even like out of like disrespect to them. Right. It's just like, I only have so much time in the day. Absolutely. I'm going to die. If it, again, this is my last day on the planet. I want to be doing it. <laughs> That's how good. I want to be not a slave to someone else. I you like know? that. So I am kind of like intolerable when it comes to like wasting mm -hmm. time. I like that. I mean, you're right. That's one of the very few things that we can't get more of. Right. You know? You know? So, so, um, yeah, so that's one thing, and I don't, I don't want that dominate in my life. But I like that saying, what, what, what you tolerate will dominate. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and another one I have here, and this is probably kind of, kind of maybe common knowledge, but I believe it wholeheartedly. Excuses are lies we tell ourselves. Excuses are lies we tell ourselves. Yeah, that's a good one. You ever heard another one? It was like, we question all beliefs except for the ones we truly believe and those we don't think to question. Mm, and that's good too. That's a good one. Yeah. You know, and that's, oh. that's, uh, that's a problem. My problem growing up is I thought I knew more than the people around me mm. and I didn't even think of, to question it. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't know as much. So all, yeah, exactly. Excuses, um, you know, over overconfidence. Those, mm -hmm. those, those are killers oh, to a lot of things. Huge, huge. So, so what's the next, I mean, obviously, you're wrestling. Yeah. What's the plan? Where, where, where are we going from here? Like, how, how long we got left? What, what, what's, what's the goal? What's, what's Alex, you know, I don't, I don't need you to break down your five, 10 year plan for me, but I'm saying like, what, what is there, is there a little roadmap before you here? Yeah. Um, uh, so here's the thing about plans. They never work the way you want them to. <laughs> That's never. very true. Um, yeah. so you have to throw some audibles at here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, 
as far as my like i can go coach right now no problem right right yeah I, yeah I was wondering if, if, it, if it's that. like a money situation it's it's like i can get a job somewhere mm-hmm. else and i think with my academic background too like i can get i'll be okay moving forward right so right now what i'm focusing in on is can i can i pull a logan steve can i walk away from this sport and be like i'm happy with my my effort yeah i did what i can do mm-hmm. you know like because if, if i can do that then i then i can walk away happy man yeah it doesn't sure. matter it could be I mean, it could have been this year. I could have won a world championship and been like, you know what? I did it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, for sure. Time to do the next adventure yeah. in life. Because no matter what I'm doing, whatever whatever my effort I'm doing right now and now in wrestling is going to pour into something else. Of course. It's not going to change. It's just, no. just going to go to something else. Yeah. Um. So my plan, mm-hmm. um, and I'm, this is actually a pretty solid plan as okay. far as plans go, um, is I'm going to make a world team next year, mm-hmm. you know, win a world championship. Right. By then we'll be right around the Olympics coming up soon. And I'm going to have to make, make the decision to go down or go up right now. I'm leaning towards going down to 65. Oh, wow. Which sucks because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, <sighs> but I kind of realized, I mean, it's not even like selling myself short, but I just kind of realized like maybe, maybe I'm not a Olympic weight class wrestler. Mm. It sucks, but you know, like sure. maybe I am, maybe I, maybe I had this, this kick in, change in my head where I just somehow shrink my body to be so efficient at this weight that mm-hmm. I'm unstoppable possible. Yeah. But um, I do plan 70 being my weight. I think it's a good happy meeting between enjoying food, enjoying yeah. your, your life outside. You know, it's not completely so disciplined that you're like a soldier. It's like you can yeah. actually like, you know. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, by then I'll be like 27, 28, and I'll mm-hmm. make that decision. I'm like, do I want to transition now? Do I want to coach? As far as I'm concerned right now, I don't want to go coach. I mm. want to try my hand at the business world. I think, okay. I think I'll thrive in it. Oh, absolutely. Um, but right now, all what's most important is – trying to make me the best wrestler, the best person, best young man I can be yeah. right now because I'm only going to get this shot once. That's true. And, and yeah. the days are going by. Yeah, you know? that's good. So That's good. You're kind of like poised at the perfect age right now. You're you're old enough to to kind of be through the young adolescent, you know, young man stuff, but not over, you know, too old where you're starting to, you know, physically change where it becomes yeah. a lot harder. You know, you're like at that almost perfect pinnacle i had a uh it was funny at the after the u.s open i, w- I went to the tight mercury wrestling social mm-hmm. and there there was um uh kendall cross mm-hmm. was there and um randy lewis um a few other like big name wrestlers yeah. of the past you know yeah. all, all around this table and they're drinking a little bit yeah and for some reason something just stuck in my head i'm like i should go sit down and talk to these guys you yeah. know and um like royce alger was there and I was definitely like the outlier in this conversation, but I just kind of sat there and started like listening. Yeah. To them. Oh, and, yeah. Wisdom. Yeah. And mind you, these dudes are drinking, so there's they're, they're <laughs> giving wisdom, you, yeah, you know. Yeah. But yeah. um, they kind of told me they're like, "Pantel, how old are you?" I'm like, "I'm 25." They're like, "So you'd be like 26, 27, uh, 28 ish around like the next Olympics, you know, around that area." And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "That's when we were best wrestlers. Mm. That's when we were our very best." Yeah. And I'm looking, I'm like. And these guys are saying that maybe they're right. Yeah. Maybe maybe the best is to come. And yeah. I believed it to begin with. So Absolutely. I guess I'm believing the right thing. That's good. I like that a lot. Uh, going off of that, what's motivating you, man? I think in order to be great, we have to have something that's um, pulling us, right? Not an external motivator necessarily, but something. It could be the passion for the sport or the love of the sport. But what what's pulling you and in, in the catalyst behind all this stuff? Yeah. It's tough because I think it goes back to being toxically positive. I think I'm just, some people are just wired, you know, I think it was a type A personality mm-hmm. where they're mm-hmm. just a go-getter. I think that's me. I think I'm just, there's just something about me. Like, even like if I sit down, like, I don't like sleeping in, you know, like I like, I like sleeping. Sure. But like, I, if I'm laying in bed, I'm up, I'm, I have to get up. The only time yeah. I sit down during the day is, you know, if I have to use the restroom where I'm driving, you gotta go. I'm doing a podcast right now, which yeah. I feel like is productive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, that's my drive is like, I mean, what this is, this is a big game. This yeah. is, you know, like we're going to leave here. I'm going to maybe be an old man. I yeah. want to say I, I, I played the game the best I could. I dealt mm-hmm. my cards, you know? That's um, good. So that's what I do. Everything, every time I try and do anything, I'm like, well, what do I have to lose? Yeah, that's good. You know? I like it. You just like putting it out there and seeing where, what your best can get. You know, right, I right. like that. And you, uh, was the Muhammad Ali says, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Right. I like that. You yeah. know, it's a, it's a good one. Um, so, so going off of that, just a couple uh, little, what's your favorite, um, 
uh, move? Like what? What uh, every kid wants to know? You know their their favorite wrestler's favorite move. What's favorite wrestling move? I mean, yeah. double leg. It's demeaning. It works. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a good know, like it's it's a kind of thing where um you can end a match right away with it. Mm. You, you get double legged hard. Like Jordan Burroughs would tell me. I mean, tell you like he he. I wrestled first time I ever wrestled Jordan Burroughs. I was I just made a junior world team and he was getting ready for the Olympics and. Jordan's very good at actually being, he's a very like open person. He's very mm-hmm. like accepting. And yeah. he, he pulled me aside and I was, you know, like 17, 18 or, and I was like, yeah, I was like 18. He's like, Hey, come on, let's do a simulation match. And to me, I'm like, this is like the coolest thing ever, <laughs> yeah, you know? Absolutely. But he double legged the life. I mean, he hit me so hard. I've been flying across the mat and I'm like, that's it. That, that is what everyone talks about, you <laughs> yeah. know? And I wanted to develop my own yeah. one of those. And I have one. I didn't do it the past two weeks. That's, mm-hmm. that's why I was bummed about my performance, but I have one of those. Yeah. I have one of those mean attacks. Those kill yeah, shots. Yeah, you do. You do. So I like those. I like those explosive hard just absolutely run through a dude. That's you know? a great move. And, and yeah, it's one of those ones. First that, move you learn. Absolutely. First move you learn. And, and, and it's still working yeah. at your level, right. which is incredible. Speaking of Jordan, I asked my previous guest to ask my next guest a question. So he had a question for you. Okay. And his question was, who has been your hardest working um a teammate hardest working teammate so when you say hard working you mean like like just like grind or like strategically hard working like you know a, i think i think i think it's i think it well yeah give me both i'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure i'm gonna look up his exact because he, he texted me he i'm gonna give you exact his uh Okay, so I like to know who his hardest working teammate has ever been. He's ever been around his hardest working teammate. He's ever been around. Yeah, oh, hardest working. Jack. Okay, so Jack Medley. I'll give you an example. Jack Medley. He um he was our starter. He actually got beat off his spot by by Nick Seriano, mm. but he was a national qualifier. He beat some good guys. Mm-hmm. He's actually another big reason why I ran the marathon because I ran that fifteen. I ran that eighteen mile run, and then he he ran a marathon. He ran like, he's ran like 10 marathons. Yeah. His dad's so. a professional marathon runner <laughs> and he goes, I dare to run it. I'm like, well, I got a dare on the line and I've already yeah, almost done you're it. You're like, in. Got to do it. You're in. But Jack is the kind of guy. He just puts his head down and he goes, mm. he, he doesn't, he doesn't make excuses. He doesn't complain. You know, um, I, 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 I Iowa style. Maybe I think mm. any wrestling, st- mm-hmm. he, that dude, he's just a workhorse, okay. you know? Um, but he's not, he's not, he's not the best wrestler in the room. I mean, right. BF at the spot. He's getting better because he's so disciplined. Mm-hmm. But that dude works hard. Okay. You know, yeah. then you look at guys like, you know, Stevan Mechik and Miles Amin, and they work very smart. They're very efficient. You know, um, they work very closely with, with Sergey. They watch a lot of tape. Mm-hmm. They film mm-hmm. their practices. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's, I think, so that's the difference. It's like, yeah, that's just, a whole different kind of hard work. But it's still hard work for sure. Right. Yeah. That's, and I loved his question too, because there is, it is, um, it's got layers, right? Yeah. You know, cause he's been on a bunch of teams and I'm, I'm sure he's seen those different types of hard workers. And then he's right. probably seen guys that are great that just don't work. They don't seem to work that hard. Right. You know, they figured something out. So I love this question. And obviously I want to have a question. You're going to have a question for our next, um, you know, guest as well. And I'll let you know who that is. So yeah, you already got it. So that's good. So I'll tell you, Johnny asked Jordan, would you go skydiving with me? (laughs) And Jordan said, yes, I would. Of course. Yeah. 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 So, so I thought that was pretty cool. So, um, yeah. And, um, this is, this is, this a random, we all got to know cause we're, we're wrestlers. What's your favorite food, man? What's that thing, man? What's that craving? Like favorite food. Do you have those cravings? Have you wrestling cravings at all? Yeah. Um. No. I just I get dehydrated, so uh, I wa- just I need water. Wet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sounds great. No, I am with you. Food's tricky because I enjoy. I mean, there's. I can't even think of food I really don't like. Mm. Um. I love tacos. It's just, yeah. It's a, great, it's a great vehicle for Absolutely. whatever food's on it. Um, yeah. But then there's also like pastas, pizzas, you know. Yeah, I speak my language. You know, so I'm open to all that kind of stuff. It's just mm-hmm. here's the thing: is I'm actually very, like again, I try to I try to streamline. I don't like to think about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like some people, like you know, like what do you want to eat and all that. And I'm just like, you literally, you pick whatever. I don't care. Did um, you the, the efficient word has come up literally a hundred times? That that is you. And I, I love that. Dude, I eat an omelet every day. And if I don't know what to eat for dinner, could be no omelet food, I'll make an omelet. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like I know I know what it does. Before wrestling tournaments, you yeah. know what I do? Like some people are worried about what they're gonna eat after weigh ins. I'm like, I'll just go buy like an egg sandwich. Like even if I have to microwave, I know what's in it. Yeah. I'm like I know how I feel when I eat this. Like it's efficient, you know. Dude, even going back to like repetition yep. and like my workouts, yep. I was gonna say this. When I go to the gym, 
Listen, you get some guys just pump up yeah. to do a pump. Yeah. Like I go there to train, but I do the same warm up I do before like a wrestling match. Like, oh, really? A quick variation, but like same fast feet thing, same stretching. I don't do obviously double legs and stuff, you know, but like I do the same system mm. all the time because I it, know how I feel after. Yeah. Is it, is it preparing your mind and your body? Everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, that's, and that's, if, if I tell it to kids at camps, I'm like, you want to, you get too nervous for matches. How do you deal with those pre match, you know, bugaboos? Yeah. I'm like streamline your, your life. Like know how you feel going into this all the time. Make mm. it that such such like a repetitive thing yeah, that you don't. Good. And you stop thinking about it. It's just muscle memory now. You know how you're gonna feel. So you just do it. You know. You think. I guess it, it kind of interesting thought is that as you transition to the business world later on in life, it'll probably be the same way, right? You'll have a routine. Yeah. You're going to probably, yeah. It might even be some of that. You see some of those NFL players doing their wrestling warm up. Pre match pre thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I think that's good. That's that's a great, I mean, and that works in life as well as it does in the yeah. wrestling match. I, I mean, like and that. then figure out how you can condense it to be the point where it's like, if you're like, oh, you're on, the, you're on deck on the mat mm. and you're sleeping a second ago, mm -hmm. like, how can you do that pre match thing? In like a short window, but oh, it gets you there. Good. That's not, that, that's super efficient. Yeah, then like it, that. it cuts time, and you're still ready to go. I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out. You that's know? good. Yeah, that's real good. So, so yeah, no, I like and so good. Yeah, yeah tacos. Yeah, yeah, tacos to that. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah, yeah. The uh, another question I asked all my other guests: uh, your Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Mm. Let's do. Let's do. Um, you can do it USA, and then you can do um, um, NCA. NCA then USA. You do, um, yeah. If you just tricky. have one, you can just do the one. You don't have to do both, but I, I've get Johnny had to give two because he, they were you know different lists for him. Yeah. And, yeah. So I mean, yeah, John Smith is on there. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I give Burroughs. Dude's mm -hmm. consistent. Mm -hmm. It's the thing you gotta look at, like, and this is a big thing I got from being around Sergey Belagazov, is I mean consistency. Like anyone could, like for better sake, if you show up with a day, win a world t championship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you can consistently win those, like you're untouched. It's like, dude, that's like that's how you get to goat status. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. Um, so I think Saj Live is the best wrestler on the planet. Like Snyder may be able to beat him. Yeah, but Saj Live is consistently mm. won everything. Mm. Like he's he's good. Right. You know. Right. Um. Yeah. So Burroughs, Smith. Um. And then it's tricky because there, who's that one guy? I'm, I'm forgetting his name. He's from Oki State. He was an Olympian for Japan. Um, oh, three time three time national champion. Yeah, he couldn't wrestle for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, wait, I, I'm uh, forgetting his name right now. Um. But people said he was so good, and they're like, "How good was he?" He's like, "No one touched him." Yeah, that's how good he was. Yeah, yeah. You that's know, but he wrestled good. for Japan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, true. It's tough, man. I, I, I think even even put Snyder up there. It's since yeah. 2017 when he what was it 2016, maybe, 16, yeah, when he hit the scene. That dude's been winning everything. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, in the U.S. at least. Yeah, and then NCAA, um, I came as begin to start because there's just so many guys. So many guys. I mean, yeah, it's hard. Any four time national champ is going to be in there. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to. Yeah. 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 With Sanders, be Sanders yeah. Being the top, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, you know, you, and you kind of have a thing like where do you put Gable? Uh, not not Dan Gable, but Gable Stevenson, uh, like someone that's done that in the you know USA, but also his collegiate couple Hodges and stuff like that. It's like right. that's incredible, right? And so there it is. So it's so subjective. There's so many. There's so many good people, you know. Right. And, and the I, consistency again. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. not had. Yeah. He's not. He's Gable he's, could be the goat. He like could he, be if he wanted to be. Yeah. But he's not, he's, he's, he's deciding to walk away from wrestling. Is which he? I don't which know. again, we don't know. But right. if he does, it's kind of like you said. You know, it's like Yogi or uh, um, uh, Steber. Yeah. It's like walking away. Right. As one of the, that's hard to do, but it that's do. it's pretty incredible that he, he's able you know to do it. I mean, I was I was watching this year, and then you gotta get that little rumor he might come back, and it's like yeah. Anyways, but yeah, so, so it's hard to make that. But I, I definitely agree with some of those that you put up there because consistency and I stuff mean, like yeah. that. Dude, what, what Smith has done, I mean, come on. like Yeah, ridiculous. You know. And then Jordan's Jordan man. Right. Yeah, so um, cool. It, it, the the last thing I want to get your your take and just yeah. if, if you could challenge, we call it a challenge, challenge someone to be on this podcast, someone yeah. that – that you believe can bring wisdom that can help you know us understand the world that we live in as far as combat uh, sports uh, uh, athletes um, and how it can relate to the world. Who 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 are you challenging to to be on the, this this show? I mean, there's only one answer I can give you, and it'd be weird because him in a podcast setting would be kind of strange because I think he's just so like respectful and like the and by night part it's Sergey Belgasov. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. But 
again, like I spent a month in Russia with mm. him and Alex Deringer, mm-hmm. um, after the year again, like, and every day at dinner, we would just sit down I and mean, we'd sit there for hours. Like mm. I mean, the amount of time I spent with these guys just talking about solving the world's problems yeah. every, from every yeah. aspect of life. And I'm just like, th- very, very intelligent person. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's very cultured. He's traveled the whole entire yeah. world. He's, he's coached like 10 different countries yeah. from Japan to all these people. Um, so, I mean, to talk to eat every, just to be around Sergey Belagazov's presence is like, you just hope some of it rubs off on mm-hmm. you. And I think that's probably why Cliff Keen's getting so much better is got like Sergey Belagazov. Yeah. I think anyone it would behoove anyone to talk to him. Yeah. If you can have him on a podcast, it might be, it might be kind of uncomfortable because he'd be like very like, well, in Russia, we do, you know, like, yeah, you know, but yeah, like, but the wisdom. if you can open him up, he'll talk. I mean, it's, he's got so many layers and he, mm. he knows a lot. Very smart yeah. dude. Yeah. I'd be love, I'd love to sit down and just pick his brain for a little bit for sure. Right. Yeah. And, that, and the, the caveat or the uh, counter to that would be a guy like Kyle Dake, mm. who's also kind of unorthodox as mm-hmm. far as his approach. Um, you know, cause it's just how he can change his wrestling style, yeah. how he trains, all that kind of stuff. I think, I think for this podcast, it'd be good to have someone to give you a mind, uh, just a pr- perspective that you haven't heard before. Yeah, for sure. Because that's how you get better as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you keep getting, if I you pull on Dan Gable, it's like the same old Dan Gable stuff, mm-hmm. right? Which is great, yeah. you know, but I think you got to have a little bit of spice yeah. in there. No, I like that. And that's what, you know, kind of, and, and, and that's what I want to do. I want to explore all these styles and all these people because my theory is there's common thread. Yeah. Even in the, you know, the guy that's the, the philosopher that's a wrestler, yeah. you know, and then, then there's the guy that's just out there letting it rip. There's common thread that holds us all together. And I believe that that is undeniable and I believe that it can help the world. Yeah. I believe we got something. We got a cheat sheet. This yeah. is my, my, my theory. Yeah. There's no such thing as cheating, but my we, we, we've, we've figured it out. We've worked been hard right. work. We can help others get there. Right. So I'll tell you one thing I figured out. The biggest thing I figured out is you have to enjoy why you're doing it. Mm, that's good. And that's not even enjoy doing it or enjoying right, it. Right, right. The process is you enjoy why you're doing mm. it. The best I think I ever wrestled was when we had, again, I just beat James Green, just beat Haji Aliyev. Um, I was... I actually made it to be the number one ranking in the world at one point. Wow, that's great. During this that's this awesome. this same time frame. So clearly I think this is why it was the best. But it was because I had Bajrang in the room, Bajrang mm-hmm, Punya, mm-hmm. and he was just beating my ass so bad. I just I couldn't he, it was a bad matchup for me. And yeah. like every single day, like the first time I actually walked out of practice being like, like what the hell just happened? <laughs> like I'm like, oh my God. Like yeah. I had nothing for him, you oh know. My gosh. There's levels. And Every time I wrestled him, I got a little bit better. I started mm. shutting down his hand fighting. I started shutting down his scrambling, shutting down his front headlock. He's got all the different kind of stuff. And I started becoming kind of obsessed with it. And that's mm. all I do. Like, hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. You see that with Yanni. You see it with all these yes. different guys. They just, they're like obsessed with their craft. Mm-hmm. And it's not even that it's like wrestling. It's the the little victories in wrestling. They yeah. enjoy it so much. They enjoy those little wins. Yep. And I think that's going to be the most common thread you can find. People I agree. Like these little walls keep knocking down. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the day, when Bajrang left, I ended up beating him in the match. Wow. He, I mean, he stole my soul the first time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm like, that's how you get that triumphant win. You yeah. Know, all the little things, they add up, and then boom, it happens. That's good. Do, I don't know I had said I didn't have more questions, but you just brought something up. Do you let the – do you let – how long do you carry a loss? Longer than my wins. I, mm-hmm. I can tell you all my losses. I can't tell you my wins, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. that's a tr- The notable wins, definitely. Right. But – um. Yeah, dude. I mean, you again. It's that Spartan death. That's <laughs> I think a lot about that. I mean, yeah. I, I, dude, I, I do this professionally. This yeah. is my job, right? And I dedicate my, my health, my, you know, my wealth, my social yes. life, everything to this craft. That's true. And if someone can beat me when I do that, mm-hmm. that's like haunting. And it's, it's even more haunting when, um, I like. I don't perform as best as I could. Right. Cause then I'm, and that's, what's really kind of kicking me about this world team trials. And so I'm really itching to get back out there again and do my, and do what I know what to do. Mm-hmm. And that's perform. Mm-hmm. I'm a great match wrestler when I need to wrestle. Um, so it doesn't haunt me. It doesn't, it doesn't like hold on to me as yeah. much, but it does. It's like a constant reminder of well, why, Yeah. why, you know, like we, because we don't want to feel this again. We don't right. want to do this again. You know. It's good fuel for you though. Like that's good fuel. I mean, I, I want to keep going. So yeah. it's working. Some <laughs> it people works. give up. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm like, let's go again. That's good, know? man. Yeah, I like it. So. Well, I'm going to close this podcast out like this as well. I like to do. I like to kind of impart my, you know, who I 
see you to be and, and just you know, just speak over you, man. First off, I just I thank you for being on this show and, and being a part of uh, what we do here. But bigger than that, man, I thank you for competing and being this guy. You are from the moment that I've watched you wrestle to uh, my first handshake with you at Jordan's fundraiser and our little conversation there to our interactions on social media and our texts and things, you are one of the most positive guys I've ever been around. And it, it's to the point where it's infectious. I mean, my wife and I have talked about it. She kept telling me, because she's gotten into wrestling since mm -hmm. you know, we've been together. She's like, you know, the one guy. And, and I would say, <laughs> and she would just say how infectious your smile and your energy was. And, and we just are, you know, we want to celebrate you for that, man. And we just want to tell you that that is success. When you can carry a smile and a positivity the way you do and in in a combat sport and being a warrior that you are, but you still beam with this hope. That is something that the world is missing. And we just we just want to impart into you, man, that 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 you are an incredible force to be work to, to be dealt with because of that positivity. We believe in what I titled this, everything is <laughs> fighting for something. So I put the, the subtitle to the fighting for success and this is life or living the life of opportunity. Yeah. Before we even talked, I said in my heart and in my soul, I believe that this man lives for the opportunity when an opportunity presents itself you fully dive into it you give it your all and you've had some adversities and you've had some setbacks but you're always looking to the next opportunity yeah. and your glass is always half full and we love that about you man and we just are so thankful that your your success is bleeding into the rest of the world and that we get to see it we're all cheerleaders of it man and and i i, I know I, you'll see when you get out of this sport and you're able to look back over it, I hope you see what we see, which is just, I mean, literally a light, man. You are a light into this world in, in, in a world that can be kind of dark. You are shining bright, dude. I, I got to stop you, man. My ego is going from here to here. And, uh, <laughs> no, it's just, it's just honest, man. Hey, one thing I will say to this to, and say to people, because right now, again, life, life's tough. Dude. Yeah, it like is. Economy and social factors, everything's just tough. Yeah. And whenever you're feeling bad and when you're feeling like down or something, and one thing I have been doing is just saying, consider the alternative, mm. right? Like, like whether it's good or bad. Like, yeah. so if you say like, I'm, I'm a very positive person, we'll consider the alternative being negative. Yeah. It sounds terrible. Yeah, <laughs> you're you know, exactly right. Toxic positivity, yeah. maybe. Um, <laughs> but that's one thing. So man, I, I do, I appreciate your kind words really. Yeah, I just, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, go to my own, my own pace here. I'm trying to live the best life I can yeah. and um, consider the alternative of not doing that. No, thanks. No, dude, so. we, we are here for it and you do it well. And can't wait, man, to to post you and and, and talk about yeah. world champion. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, the fact that you're you're willing to sit down first. This is very like actually an awesome setting. Thanks, this is bro. this is as like as prof way more professional than I thought it was going to be. I mean, <laughs> come on, they're tough to love. This, <laughs> yeah, this is a nice touch, man. This is Italian. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, I think wrestling one a big problem is exposure. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no pro wrestling. Right. We're, we're trying to develop it, but. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we all have in common is we all know that like deep down we're not ordinary people. If, right. if, we're, if we pursue wrestling, we, we we just don't fit into the rest of the crowd of these yeah. football players and everyone right. else. It's so I think that having to like, hear more people that are actually having success that are thinking the same way. Mm. I think there's a kid at home right now that might listen to this and be like, you know what, like I can do that. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was me. I, Love just, that. I just didn't know it. You yeah, know? and I think that is that's the beauty of it. Mm. Is that's Again, if I can if I can make some if I can train a kid and he can beat me one day, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta think of it that that's way. So good. You that's know, so good. So yeah, that's that's positive for the sport. Yeah, which is positive for everyone. Yeah, well, I appreciate it, man. Taking the time out and doing this, and um, you know, again, we're just gonna be along for the ride. And uh, I can't wait to see all you do. And uh, just bless you, man. And we we thank you again. Thanks, man. All right, brother. Thank you. We'll thank sign you. Out. Yep. Says no, you're the fire.